You're watching the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live. Final day of the season, and how else to end the 2020 BassPro.com Bassmaster Open season than with a fog delay? But after about an hour and 40 minutes, they sent them off from Beeswax Creek here on Lay Lake in Alabama. And we are getting the final day of the season underway. The final day of Bassmaster Live for 2020 as well. Lay Lake is our destination this week. Beeswax is the very popular, very well-known takeoff spot right there. Columbiana, Alabama is our host this week in Lay Lake. We got to watch it a couple weeks ago for the College Classic Bracket and determine uh, some classic spots there are represented for the Opens, and we're excited to bring you Nationwide Bassmaster Live here for the Opens. Final day coverage, and we're going to cover an end to end this week on Lay Lake. You've got the whole playing field in play from the Lay Lake Dam at the bottom of the lake all the way up to the Logan Martin Dam above Lay Lake. And you see this was the takeoff just a couple minutes ago before we sent them. State Trooper gave Chris Bowes, tournament director, a lift, went out to the main lake to check on the fog. The fog had cleared in the coves, but not on the main lake. Chris Bowes saw that it was lightening up, and he said about 20 minutes, 20 minutes later, it looked like it was good to go. But it was a cold morning this morning. The top 12 pros and co-anglers, we've cut it down to just those 12, and they're vying for a classic spot today. Elite Series points and a lot of other things in store. And our leader, Keith Carson, good lead going to the final day. We got to talk to him at takeoff. I'm Keith Carson. Uh, today is day three, the final day of the Bassmaster Open on Lay Lake, and I'm in the lead with 35 pounds for two days. Uh, day one, uh, I started, uh, I'm fishing grass, running up a river, throwing a little crankbait on the edge of grass. And uh, day one, I caught all my fish by 9.30. And on day two, I didn't have a single bite by 9 a.m. So uh, that was a little, a little worrisome, but uh, <clears throat> luckily, Ended up running into them. I'm running new water every day. Today I expect to run new water as well. Uh, I'm fishing areas I've never fished before. Um, I don't even really know what we're gonna fish today exactly, uh, but you know, I'm just keeping an open mind and a positive attitude because you know, at the end of the day, it's December and you know, there's really no patterns. So just go out, catch them, have fun, and hope for the best. And that's all I can do. Keith Carson, your day two leader had a big bag yesterday, 18 pounds, 10 ounces, anchored by a 7-3 Phoenix Boats Big Bass of the tournament. There he is headed up the lake today from takeoff, getting his day started. We'll be able to tune in and watch him. We'll have cameras with the top five anglers today. There's Keith Carson, made it to his first area of fishing right now. And Carson, there's only five of our 12 anglers today that have a shot at the Bassmaster Classic. We will get into all of that as we have Plenty of time to cover that today, but normally full top 12 has a shot at the classic, but seven locals yeah, current. jumped into this huh? final day and only yeah. fished <laughs> this event for the Eastern Opens. Keith Carson's one of the guys who's fished them all, so if he wins today, he has a 3-7 lead. If he holds tight and wins, he will have a shot at the Bassmaster Classic, something that he has dreamed of his whole life. Keith Carson, your day two leader. He had 35 pounds, four ounces for two days of competition, a 3-7 lead. He had a 5-11 anchor fish on day one, a 7-3 yesterday. And he said, I am primarily, specifically targeting places I think I can catch largemouth. He's just happened upon three spotted bass out of his 10 fish total for two days. But he's targeting largemouth. Yeah, that moon's pretty big. I wonder how that affects the fish. If you're just joining us, we mentioned it, an hour and 40 minute fog delay. 6.15 Central Time was the takeoff there in Columbiana. They didn't leave the dock till 7.55 Central Time, so an hour and 40 minute delay. We will not add that on to the end of the tournament day, but rather they just have an hour and 40 less minutes to compete out there today. Everyone, it's fair for the top 12 because they're all dealing with the same conditions. We've got Jacob Walker on our left. And 
Those two guys are in the top three. Walker sitting in third place, 30 pounds, four ounces. He was our day one leader, had 17 pounds, four ounces for the day one lead. Fell back a little bit yesterday, but he said, man, I had the bites on to have another 17 plus pounds and I just did not get him in the boat. He said there's been a lot of traffic up river where he's wanting to fish. He said a lot of people were just kind of sitting in those areas. They weren't really like, they were just kind of in the way he phrased it. Not necessarily pressure, but just people in his way. He couldn't necessarily move from spot to spot like he'd like to. There was a lot of guys, a lot of anglers up at the bottom of the Logan Martin Dam. If Jacob Walker won today, he Jacob, would Jacob, we give us a little classic. morning update on a... Uh, we'll hear from Jacob now. Well, I was going to start here kind of regardless of uh, of the fog. I, I wasn't really planning on having any kind of a morning bite. I really haven't had a morning bite all week. It's been, uh, you know, just running up. I've actually, I started here the first morning of the tournament. I didn't hit it yesterday. You know, I don't know if, if saving it's really the right word, but uh, I didn't stop on it yesterday. I just went all the way up to where I, where I fished yesterday. Um, I, I ran all the way up there and stayed up there until they cut that water off. And this morning I decided I'd stop here before I went up there. Cause once I get up there, I plan on staying up there for a while today. But, uh, the fog really didn't hurt me much. It definitely cut out uh, a few hours of, of time for us, but uh, I don't think it's gonna, it's gonna, it's not gonna affect me as much as some people probably. <clears throat> uh, I hope the, uh, I hope the wind blows. That's gonna be a big deal this afternoon. If the, if the wind picks up, if we can catch a couple good spots up here and the wind picks up, we'll go down river and try to catch a large mile. But the spots have definitely been a lot more consistent for me all week. So I'm uh, going to kind of lean, lean on them to be my, to be the, the biggest part of my bag. And if I can get, if I can get some of them in the boat, I'll, I'll go try to catch a big large mile. I'm a largemouth fisherman. I mean, I, I knew coming in, into this thing that the, all the largemouth stuff down river I, I typically fish would, would get pounded on and it'd be tough to, to catch them after everybody pounded on them in practice. So I made myself come up here and fish where I, I normally don't fish and it, it's kind of, it's worked out. Jacob Walker is one of those guys we love to have on Bassmaster Live. Ask him one question and let him go. He was great on the phone last night and really dove into what he was doing. And he said on the phone to me, quote, unquote, I'm going to win tomorrow. I don't care what the leader does. I know I'm going to win. So Jacob Walker, very confident. I believe he's also a tackle store manager down the road at Mark's Outdoors. Knows well, knows Lay Lake very well. Chris Payne, also one of those local anglers that knows Lay Lake, started out the day in fifth place. We'll get to hear from Chris during the day, all day today, at a little scratchy service where he's at right now. We've got a three box with Keith Carson, Jacob Walker, Chris Payne, first, third, and fifth. The others in the camera coverage today Clint Miller and Adam Nye. Three of our top five from the Alabama region know Lay Lake very well. Two of our top five, Keith Carson and Adam Nye, with classic eligibility on the line. I know that means Keith Combs, Bassmaster Lead Series Pro, will be dialed into Bassmaster Live today watching. Maybe he won't be watching because he doesn't want to watch it happen, but 
five out of the 12 can make the classic. If one of the other seven win today, they won't make the classic and it'll get Keith Combs into the classic via elite points. We'll get into all of that as well. A lot at stake today though, $38,000 for the Ranger Top Cash Award today, the winning pro, $15,000 for the winning co-angler and the Mercury Top Cash Award. If you're keeping up with Bash Track today as well, you'll see Chris Payne slip down to sixth place because Teb Jones, who started the day in sixth, has one keeper in the boat, moved up to fourth so far, one pound, 12 ounces. Teb is actually fishing closest to beeswax in the takeoff of any of our anglers in the field. It's very unique. We'll get into it when we look at the leaderboard today, but it's very interesting how First place had the big bass of day two, seven three. Second place, big bass of day one, a six zero. Oh. Third place was the day one leader, and third and fourth have been up the river. Chris Payne, Teb Jones, Alex Sherrill, Sam Fish, Scott Pellegrin, KJ Queen, Joey Nania, Keith Poche, basically. 5th through 12th are all in different sections of the lake as you move down from the river portion. Some of our top guys are up in the river. Like I said, the river below the Logan Martin Dam. It got a lot of pressure this week, and current flow is a big deal on Lay Lake in how that narrow river reacts. Two turbines flowing. It floods those banks. One turbine floods, floods it as well. Jacob Walker explained as well as other guys today. All right, let's make a move. Um, we're just going to run up just a hair uh, up the river, go hit a grass stretch. I have made three casts and made three coals with like minutes to go yesterday. Um, so let's go hit that. You know, they're probably not going to be there because they've been moving so fast, but we'll just go hit the stretch, you know, hopefully run into them. It's Keith Carson on your left making a move. Cranking really a lot of different structures, but mostly cranking grass edges. And that's not like submerged hydrilla or anything like that. It, it's, I'm pretty sure it's the bank, the water willow grass, the stuff that gets matted up. He's fishing the edges of it. <laughs> it looks like a cricket bucket with Jacob Walker. I know he's... Well, typically when I'm fishing grass, flipping, I call my soft plastic a cricket. No matter what it is I'm throwing, I'll call it a cricket. Just so happens I'm not flipping grass, but if I need another cricket, there they are. Just reach down and pull one out. Yesterday I couldn't have the cricket bucket because it was raining, but today we got the bucket out in full force. Just easy access, efficiency. We'll hopefully get word on Jacob Walker. This looks like Chris or Clint Miller. Looks like Clint Miller right now. Yep. Second place angler. Sorry, Good folks who just tuned in. And Mike and I have B issues real quick. Come on, don't, don't knock an element, man. Get in the boat. It ain't that big. Oh! Thought it was something. Two and a half, maybe. Thank you, Jesus. Six point six.
Clint Miller. Local to Lay Lake, fishes this place a whole bunch. He's been fishing with a shaky head on hard spots. Some of those rough, hard areas like into boat ramps, uh, some edges of you know rock points, some jut outs, some things like that that are rough edges as he calls them, hard well, spots. I, I pulled up on a spot that they came to me yesterday and I thought I'd do it. Thought they'd be there and they wouldn't. Uh, this, I've hammered this spot for two days. I, I'm hoping there's a few more here. In case you can't tell, I call it chicken bank. You can hear my cock doodle doodles back there. <laughs> but I guess we're right on schedule. Hope, hopefully they're gonna buy it for us. Like I said during the fish catch, sorry for technical difficulties on my end. I could not hear Jacob Walker, thought his audio was down, but talked about his structure bugs, and that's what he keeps in his cricket bucket on the front deck. He's not fishing with live bait, not this week. That's where he keeps his structure bugs. And then Clint Miller there hooking up with a solid spotted bass to get his day started. He's caught almost a six pounder each day of the event. He caught a six day one to have the biggest bass of the day. Then he almost caught a six pounder yesterday, a five and change. That has helped carry him to 31, 13, three, seven behind Keith Carson. We've been fishing some of those banks that the channel bumps up to. We'd consider those channel swing banks, have some hard spots on those rock or concrete, things like that. Fish have been holding near. It's caught eight largemouth and two spots. Normally, here we go, got him. Keith Carson's hooked up. Stay on, baby. Decent fish. Stay on. I don't think it's barely hooked. Stay on, please, stay on. I'm gonna come back here. Stay on, babe, stay on, stay on, stay on. Yes, that's a three pounder. <laughs> Barely hooked it. But I can't get the hook out, so maybe I hooked it better than I think. <laughs> yes. I almost didn't stop here. This isn't even the stretch where I caught those fish. I just got to remember to keep an open mind, you know, stay positive. You know, I, I got to remind myself every morning that I actually, I know nothing. All I know is my instincts and, uh, and just to trust myself. I grew up fishing the St. John's River and, uh, you know, it's, it's got current, it's tidal, it's, um, you know, I know how to fish these bodies of water. I just have to trust myself. Keith Carson equating Lay Lake to a little bit of the St. John's River with the current flow and the way this fish position. And he is throwing that Berkeley Fritz side five this week, catching some fish a little bit different than most guys. And this is our unofficial leaderboard. Does not include that three pounder Keith Carson just caught or the two and a half that Clint Miller just caught. So add a two and a half, add a three pounder for Carson and Miller. And Keith Carson has about a four pound lead over the rest of the field. We'll be right back after this commercial break for more action from Lay Lake. The Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live is brought to you by Humminbird. 
Mercury, Minn Kota, and Vi, Talon. You're watching the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens live. Welcome back in. Final day coverage. The BassPro.com Bassmaster in Eastern Open at Lay Lake. But look at the Falcon Rods Bassmaster Angler of the Year race sealed up yesterday by Brian New by one point over Justin Atkins, Matt Robertson, and Mark Frazier. Those four anglers qualified for the Elite Series. Actually, New, Atkins, and Frazier have all double qualified in various divisions. We'll get into all that explaining, but that is a very key mark right there. The top four overall qualify, the top four unqualified in the Easterns and unqualified in the Centrals also make it in. So 12 total anglers making it to the Bassmaster Elite Series for 2021. We will break all of that down in the coming hours of Bassmaster Live to show you who will be in the field next year for the Elite Series. As we take it back down to Lay Lake, we saw Keith Carson end the last segment before our commercial break with a three pounder. A good start to his final day. Clay Lake, a legendary place that's hosted a couple Bassmaster Classics. We've been here before. We were here just a couple weeks ago for the College Classic Bracket where Trevor McKinney took it home from McKendree University beating his teammate Blake Jackson for a shot at the Bassmaster Classic and representing the College Series on the Opens level in 2021. Congratulations to Trevor McKinney doing that. Congratulations to the guys who qualified for the Elite Series via the points race yesterday when most of it went final, only 12 anglers fishing today. So 130, 140 something went home and that finalized a lot of the standings, but a little bit of movement today. So we're out with Clint Miller, he's hooked up again. They little, but we'll take them this morning. Second keeper of the morning for Clint Miller. Back out with Keith Carson, our day two leader. Solid lead coming into the final day today. Actually, I'm gonna fish up a little more. There's a piece of wood sticking out. I think there's a shallow flat that comes out and that piece of wood. Here's one. Little guy, but he's a keeper. Number two, spot. Second keeper, a spotted bass for Keith Carson. We mentioned he's been cranking grass edges for largemouth specifically, but has lucked upon a few spotted bass in the process. It's been a seven largemouth, three spotted bass ratio over the first two days for his 10 fish that he's weighed in. Right now he's got one largemouth and one spotted bass in the boat. Throwing that Berkeley Fritz Here's side one. five. Good one. Oh yeah, come on. Hooked up again. Come on. Oh, stay on, baby. Stay on. Spot. Stay on. Stay on. It's actually not that good, but it's, it's a keeper. Yeah. That one's, it's probably over two. Maybe. I'd say it's a solid keeper. Especially with a three and a half pound lead coming into yeah. the day. Two pounder. Cool. Oops, oops, we got tangled. All right, got three.
All right, let's see if this log's got a good one on it. Oh, come on. Oh, it came right through it, perfect. Oh, shoot. I thought that was one. Dang, that was a good cast. Oh, feels good to make a good cast like that. Let's try it again. Live update, I got three keepers in the boat. Uh, my first fish was a, a good three pounder, and then I got a 13 incher, and I got one that's about two. I got two spots and one large mouth so far. So uh, I'm just throwing this Fritz side five. I just, uh, I just pulled in here. I wasn't even gonna stop here, and I figured, you know, let's stop. Uh, the spot where I was catching them right before weigh-in is up there around the bend. And uh, so, you know, I just gotta keep reminding myself, keep an open mind. It's a new day. You know, I, I don't know anything except to throw this Fritz side five, keep it in my hand all day, and, uh, you know, keep going. You know, I'm happy, off to a good start. Got three keepers already. Um, and uh, I'm not even to the good part of the river yet. So, so I'm ready, keep it moving. Strong start to Keith Carson's final day, three keepers. Some of the guys, hey, 20 pounds is potentially possible here at Lay Lake this time of the year and this week. That's what a lot of locals have said, but they need Keith Carson to slip a little if they want to catch him. And he's already starting strong with. Nope, that was that was grass. About three for like six-ish pounds, six and a quarter pounds probably. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. I gotta update the ass track. Keith Carson's nickname for Bash Track might be a little inaccurate there, but I know that he's been doing it all week and keeping everybody in the loop. He's been an unofficial leader all week on Bash Track. As he's been updating, and we appreciate the anglers doing that. It's a little bit different this year with Opens Live. We got cameras boat to boat. We also have Bash Track incorporated for the Opens so they can keep their friends and family updated and me as well. I bothered all 12 of them last night asking them to make sure they try to do their Bash Track so we can tell y'all the game and show you what's going on. And so we appreciate those guys taking the time when they're making moves, you know, moving from one spot to another, just three or four clicks of the button and they are updated and we get to see how big of a lead that Keith Carson will have. Meanwhile, Teb Jones up to three fish as well for about four and three quarters. He's moved into second. Uh, Clint Miller's fish hasn't popped in yet. Alex Sherrill, local as well, a three, five. Yep, and we called it Keith Carson's three fish just popped in for six pounds even right now. Joey Nania also has three fish, but for about three pounds, so three one-pounders for Joey. A couple guys logging in bass, bass track catches already. Live update, they ain't biting. I got a looper in my line. Y'all making me nervous as hell. But it's gonna be okay. What time is it? Eight o'clock yet? I know what the problem is. It is 8.50, Clint, so <laughs> yes, it's eight o'clock. Clint rigging up. My sweet little wife what me, wrote me these notes all week, said open at eight. Let's see what it says. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. You got this. Okay. Y'all remind me when it gets to 10. Okay. 
Catch him up, man. I just jacked up my reel. Clint rigged up two rods yesterday, last night, while I was on the phone with him. Both of them shaky head for the specific thing that he doesn't want to retie. Cool to see Clint take a moment and read a note from his wife. A lot of support goes into fishing these opens. It's a big step also for some local guys. Hey, it's just fishing, but going from fishing a one-day local tournament or a two-day local tournament against some of the best anglers in your local region versus competing in a three-day open on your home lake. A lot of pressure, and Clint has handled it well so far. Second place coming into today, even though he said and admitted he was nervous as heck with the cameras watching. He seemed cool as a cucumber on the phone last night. Hooked again. Stay on. Stay on, please stay on. I need this one, stay on, stay on, stay on. Okay, okay, that's a decent one. Okay, that's a good one, that's over two. It's a long. I keep saying they're barely hooked and like, I can't even get the hooks out now. Man, I hate it with treble hooks when you, you get one hook out and then you bury another one in. one it's over two let's say so I probably got probably got about like eight eight and a half pounds with four fish all right so that's four cool cool indeed eight and a half pounds for Keith Carson four fish that one hit right at the boat as well you saw that Slack line in the crankbait right there at the boat. Yeah, I completely forgot what I was talking about, guys. So, Houston River spotted that. So, maybe it'll come back to me sometime throughout the day. Best place to land them at the back of the boat. Lowest side closest to the water. And even though it's cold out, don't mind scooping in a solid spot of bass. Keith said four fish, eight and a half come on, pounds. Give me a good one. There's a solid margin now, over 10 pound stud. lead unofficially over second place. I'm fishing parts of the river that no one's really been fishing. Oh, I watched it eat wow. it. Another one at the boat. <laughs> that was a top water bite. I felt him hit it. I paused it when I brought it to the top. <laughs> Not a giant, but that's number five. So I probably got 10 pounds now. Yeah, he's small, but. All right, number five. Let me see, what's my smallest one? Figure that out real quick. I think it is. I think it's red. Yeah, red, red, and then yeah, red, then probably white. But we'll figure out. Cross that bridge when we get there. Quick limit for Keith Carson, dominating 
right now, over 10 pounds and change. He's got three for six on Bass Track, about a two to two and a half he just caught, and then uh, about another you know, pound and a half. I was saying earlier, I like to retie, and yeah, one of the reasons for that is there's so many variables in fishing. There's so many, um, let me say that again, there's so many uncontrollable variables in fishing. And so I just try to control the ones that I can and, and retying and having fresh line and all that, that's, that's definitely, definitely one of the ones I can control. So these guys are yelling. Fish on in the back of the boat, and that's a good one. Clint's, Clint's co-angler's hooked up. How big is it, cuz? Alex Two Prince. Pounder, three pounder. I know Alex. Lake Chateauque region. You need any help, let me know. Damn, good old spotted bass. Damn, a three pounder. Good job. Alex Prince started the day two pounds, 10 ounces out of the lead. Solid two and a half to three pounder, like Clint said. That's what he identified it as, and has Alex Prince off in the right direction. Five fish limit for the pros, three fish limit for the co-anglers. Best total nine fish for the co-anglers wins this week. That's the maximum amount of fish you can weigh in for three days. And for the pros, 15 maximum fish. We've got second through 12th, two to three pounds, like 11 ounces there. behind. So a, a solid margin, but nothing that can't be make, made up in the opens for co-anglers. Three fish limit. If you get a kicker, that is exponentially important. So for Prince to have a three pounder roughly has him in position. Nine feet right here. Keith Carson's been cranking that Fritz side five on the edges of these grass lines, and it's that visible above the water grass, that water willow that he's been cranking on the edges of. A lot of guys have been swim jigging in it. For anybody maybe who frog and punching. Why I keep slapping well. my bait on the water, it's because I'm picking up little bits of grass. Um, it's like algae, actually. It's like some black algae stuff that grows on the grass. And uh, I don't know what it is, but. Um, a weird fact is I've been catching my big ones where there's no algae. Whenever I'm catching this algae, I haven't been getting big bites and I don't really know if that's true or really means anything to be honest, but it's just, it's just the way it's been for all my bigger bites. The big ones are, they're still coming from the grassy areas, just not where the algae is. Good observation there by Carson. Sometimes when you have a, a good hard bottom, that grass won't put off that black snot grass algae type stuff. Chris Payne's hooked up as well. We'll get back to Keith Carson's pattern and depth in just a minute. Come here. Ain't no giant. Chris Payne's first keeper of the day. Ain't no giant, he said, but looks like a solid, solid fish. Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter and 14 ounces makes three pounds. <laughs> Dude. It's a large enough, can you swim the ball around? <laughs> Sounds like Chris Payne has two keepers in the boat. They mentioned right there a 14-ouncer and a two and a quarter. 
don't know if that's an inside joke or not, but that might be two fish for Chris Payne. Meanwhile, Keith Carson fishing Damn. these grass Damn. edges. He set around Damn. nine feet deep off the end of some of these places. Yes. Five to nine that's feet deep, throwing that Fritz side Boy. five. And he's off to a great start, a limit in the boat for Keith Carson already. He came into the final day with a three pound, seven ounce lead over second place. Five pounds back was third place, so a solid margin once again, another pound and a half from second to third. And Keith Carson with a limit for roughly 10 pounds or so, has him in the driver's seat. Dominating Lay Lake right now. Keith Carson's found his groove and he is looking to stay in the... Oh, it's a good one. Yeah. Stay in the game, stay yeah. confident, stay patient. He says he knows how to fish okay. these types of places. Okay, fish one. free, open-minded, go spot to spot. Fish oh, new oh, water, oh, and he's I caught a couple fish it. right at the boat. <laughs> that was a top water bite. He's committed to yeah, his red, crankbait red, as he's pulling then... it up. Been a busy morning for Keith Carson. That bass track number does not reflect his last two keepers to fill his limit at about four pounds. So that he has about a 13-pound lead over Teb Jones. Clint Miller with a few fish, probably going to jump over Teb Jones as well. But we'll be right back with Nationwide Opens Live right after this commercial break at Lay Lake. Live coverage of the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live will return after this short break. You're watching the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live. Welcome into final day coverage here at Lay Lake. The Coosa River, home to the final Eastern Open of the year. Clint Miller, local angler, doing well this week. Started the day in second place. Been fishing with a shaky head on hard spots, banks that have channel swings on them. Oops, about to trip. I believe he has two fish in the boat so far. Oh, that felt like one. Ooh, I don't know what that was. Come on, baby. Be a big one. Got a lot of different coverage in store for the Opens this year, specifically this week. A couple of photographers out on the water, a couple anglers toting our media guys around as well. And one of those guys that's out on the water today probably wishes he was fishing. Wes Logan. Wes, you call the Coosa River home, maybe a couple of lakes up is your home lake uh, in that Logan Martin region and, and Neely and whatnot. Tell me about Lay Lake and how it's fishing this week for these guys. You know, it seems to me, I mean, it, we're almost in the like full, true fall pattern. I mean, we're not in a transition that we've been dealing with the past few tournaments on the Elite Series as well as the Opens. It seems like these fish are, which I haven't been here, but just going by what people's call and how they're catching them, that they're starting to set up like, late fall into their winter transition like you know we've had the colder weather all week this is really the first cold snap we've had all year so i think it's really got them where they're going to be for a little while a couple of months so i mean that's it's kind of how they're setting up you got a couple guys like catching them off sea walls some of them are cranking just stuff like that your normal like, fall winter time stuff so for a guy that you've been following clint miller we're watching him fish right now he seems to be dialed into a specific deal just Throwing a shaky head, has he explained a little bit why he's throwing a shaky head and what he's throwing it on? He mentioned hard spots, but for the folks at home, what, what do those hard spots mean for them to understand? Uh, from what I'm saying, I haven't got to talk to Clint yet, but just me watching him, uh, he has been throwing the shaky head. And basically what he's saying by hard spots is the three places I've seen him fish are out in front of seawalls. And I think it's just where there's like not any grass on the bank, which is making what he's calling a hard spot. But it could be where they built the seawall, some rocks fell in, some concrete like ran out in, onto the bottom. You know, just something a little bit different, just good than going down a straight bank with just grass and a muck bottom. Because there's a there's a bunch of bank on Lake Lake that's got a bunch of I don't really know what they call it, but it looks like black hair that sits on the bottom. So anywhere where there's a difference in the irregularity on the bottom, I mean, I think that's kind of what he's targeting in front of those seawalls. It's very interesting that you say that. We've been watching Keith Carson as well. has been catching him on a Fritz side five crankbait. He said, I don't know if this is a thing and I don't know how to find this, but the couple big fish that I've caught this week, he caught a 7.3 uh, 
uh, yesterday and a 5'11 on day one. Some of his bigger fish have came on banks with grass, but none of that black grass present, that snot grass, that, that kind of hair like you called it. And it makes sense that Clint Miller also finished, or he's in second, fishing hard spots where that's not present. Jacob Walker up river where that might not be present. There's a couple of these key guys that have dialed in areas that doesn't have that black grass. And is that just the die off of the water willow that you see at Lay Lake? I don't know if it's the, it's not the water willow because, because Lay has so many diverse types of grass. I don't, the water willow, because the water willow is from the top to bottom uh, on the Coast River. And the other lakes like Neyland, Logan, and uh, Weiss, they don't have that, that snotty looking stuff. So I think it's a different type of grass that's dying off in Lay. Um, but I'm just growing up here and knowing if you get around that stuff, like, like a little tip, well, I'll let you in on a little thing. Like when you, if you're fishing docks or fishing a jig on Lay Lake and you're like pitching it and you're getting on the bottom and that's coming up with your jig, I mean, you can pick your stuff up and move on. You've got to find where that stuff's not. I don't know if the fish just don't like it or it's a weird deal, but it's just always been to me. If you can find clean bottom, that's where you're going to get most of your bites. So Wes, I want to change the subject a little bit to one that I don't want to really want to talk about, but it broke my heart. I'm going to do it. it. It broke my heart seeing the official blog this week after Louisville ended in the last Central Opens. Lay Lake's the last chance for some guys on the Elite Series list to make the Classic if a guy that uh, didn't fish all of them wins today. So Keith Combs is patiently watching, but you were the next man out after Keith Combs. So missing the Classic by just two spots in the Angler of the Year race in your rookie season on the Elites. Reflect with me a little bit on how your 2020 season went and, and what your expectations were, but how you ended up, you know, bouncing back and having a solid year. Yeah, you know, I, going into the year, you know, obviously you want to win every one of them, but when you sit down and realistically thinking about it, it's, it's not going to happen. It's impossible. So you really want, I just wanted to go out there and make good decisions. And I said that in a couple of interviews before the season ever started, people would ask me what I wanted to accomplish. I'm like, I just want to make good decisions, have good tournaments and not regret anything after every tournament. And, you know, I fished as, obviously I went out there and fished as hard as I could, but I caught bad breaks just tournament after tournament after tournament it just is one of those years where if it could go wrong it went wrong as far as losing fish and stuff like that but i mean it, everybody loses fish but it just it just wasn't a good year like last year in the opens when i was able to win the points it's like every move i made was perfect and i got a lot of confidence and it just like i was just fishing good and i just didn't fish good this year so just to his fish as bad as i did and had the bad luck that i had and still be right outside the classic cut you know it it still sucks. It's not good. I mean, I want to be there, obviously, for me, myself, my sponsors, be able to support them and promote them on that stage. But, you know, we we had a bad, really bad tournament at Saint, Santee Cooper, not St. Clair. Well, St. Clair wasn't good either. But Santee Cooper uh, kind of put us real behind the eight ball, and we dug out at Chickamauga, and then we come real close at Fork. Uh, but, you know, like I said, we fought all we could, and we come up a little bit short. But I was really hoping that, the um, Brian Diller was leading the first day at Louisville, which if he would have won, would have put Keith in, and then the, if somebody would have won this one, it would have made me qualify. And I was going to fish this tournament if a local won at Louisville, but obviously that didn't happen with Tommy winning. So here we are driving the camera boat and going to be working the expo in Ray Roberts instead of fishing. Well, hey, making the most of it. And you were talking about the guys who did well this year. Justin Atkins, your buddy, qualified for the Elite Series yesterday. He will join you on the Elites next year. And as we look at the 2021 season, we just announced the schedule. And I know there's a couple key places. Gunnersville was your best finish of the year this year, even though it was a place that you hadn't had great success on before the Elite Series. But then you've got a lake like Neely Henry, one that you probably have a lot of experience on. Break down what you're kind of looking forward to for the 2021 season. Yeah, you know, it, the, the schedule's kind of, and before we ever get into that, I just want to give a shout out to Bass for getting us a schedule out and us being able to fish next year, hopefully, and all the great places we're going to be able to go. But yeah, I'm looking forward to Neela Henry. You know, I, that's where I grew up fishing. I mean, I fished there. I mean, I live 30 minutes from it. Uh, it's going to be a pretty good tournament. We're going at a good time of the year. Um, probably the best time of year to be there. I know we had the open there in October and it was a little bit tougher, uh, but I mean, it's tough in the fall anywhere. and. You know, Gunnersville, I, like you said, I'm, I'm not a big Gunnersville fan, and I'm definitely not a Gunnersville fan when uh, it's the supposed the ledge season out there, but the, it'll be a really good tournament. Pickwick will be, I think Pickwick's going to surprise a lot of people, with, which it won't surprise people, but it, it's it's going to be one of our best tournaments probably. Um, but with those three and being in Alabama, I mean, it's, it's good for me. Uh, like I said, I'm happy Bass got us a schedule out, and 
really every tournament we got, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be good, especially if we can get there the time of the year that we're scheduled for. Yeah, and it seems like the St. John's, every time we go there, it's different weather, so it could be a blowout. It could be a tough one. A lot of different adjustments there. Tennessee River, we got to see the classic, uh, you know, play out sh close to that time period. Maybe there won't be those dramatic floods that they had before the 19 Classic. A lot of great venues. Wes Logan, you will be in your second year on the Elite Series. Before we let you go, what do you expect to see from yourself? What do you want to improve upon as Wes Logan Bassmaster Elite Series Pro in year two that you didn't maybe knock out of the park in year one? The West Logan needs to put the fish in the boat that bite. Uh, that's the main thing uh, I need to work on. And, and I mean, you, you can't like go and say, I'm going to catch every fish that bites, but just be able to execute when I do get some bites and having some confidence when I make a decision that it's the right decision. I mean, that's it's all mental. This whole game is 90% mental and 10% like ability. Like once, if you can get your mind right, the fishing part will take care of itself, is what I've always heard. And I mean, it holds true. Wes Logan, get it done out there. Thank you for taking Kyle Jesse around. I know you're the only guy in the world that would do that, take Kyle <laughs> out on the leg, but we appreciate you Skyping in. We'll, we look forward to hearing from you as you jump around to different anglers today. Wes Logan, Elite Series Pro, uh, not a local to Lay, but a local to the Coosa River. All those lakes connected. We, we got to talk about it. Weiss basically starts off the Coosa River. It goes down to Neely Henry. Neely Henry goes into Logan Martin. Logan Martin uh, to Lay Lake. Lay goes down into Jordan and Mitchell, I think. And if I keep listing off lakes, I'm going to get one wrong. So I think I'm going to quit while I'm ahead on that. But great river system we get to see on the Elite Series next year. You know? Because there's just trout lines out here. That weird stage where you can't just. Yeah. Let me see. I might be able to pop it off. I'll keep them close, though. Four box with Keith Carson top left, Clint Miller, Chris Payne, and Jacob Walker. The only guy we haven't seen today is Adam Nye. You no, know, he was running up the river as well. His key time has been the afternoon, so we hope to see Adam Nye in the afternoon. He said when they cut the water off and the water kind of settles back and those fish kind of start adjusting to no current flow, that's when he's been able to catch his fish. When it's been, you know, turning with one or two, three turbines. The water's been so high, it's been hard for him to get some bites, but when it settles back out, if they cut off the water, he starts to catch them. So we'll hopefully see Adam Nye. Otherwise, we'll be watching Clint Miller, Jacob Walker, and the rest of the guys today. Stick. <laughs> Dude, I caught a, I caught a six pounder in practice doing that. Oh, I made a legitimate six pounder. I ain't caught I ain't caught five over I ain't caught a five pound fish this year, and I've caught well two sixes and a five eighty five, one in practice, and two in the tournament. Clint Miller talking on the left of your screen saying he hasn't caught a five pounder all year. And then this week, which he said he loves fishing Lay Lake in December, he said this week he's caught a three or four over that five pound mark at Lay. <laughs> Jacob Walker doing a little bit something a little bit different up the river. Said a lot of guys have been flipping and pitching black and blue and green pumpkin jigs around the laydowns, the structure, the cover that gets flooded when they, when they turn the current on. But he has been pitching a white jig. He's also been flipping a Texas rig that has structure bug on it. But a white jig has been key for him. And the sun will be a big deal today, he said. Said he likes that consistent current. 
the past few days they've been doing one generator at takeoff, mm -hmm. two of them afterwards, That's and then one after, and then they dial it back to none. They said to today one from, from one. 5 a.m. to trying noon, to buy we'll be doing one, one turbine. So that consistent current will be key for him. Carson's gone into a bad service so? area, but hey, he's in good service area, catches a quick limit, goes in bad service area, starts getting hung up. So maybe Keith Carson, I'm just going to, hey, why don't you go back to where you were? We'll watch you load the boat again. <laughs> Obviously, kidding about that, but Carson, yeah. wanted to make sure he gets his crankbait nice. back. It's been good to him this week. After pulling that hard on the line. Because this stretch, right up here, these next uh, three points up, that's where I just randomly pulled in yesterday with like minutes to go, made three casts and made three calls. I caught like three a good two and a half or so. Maybe there'll be some there. Who knows? Let's go. All right, no more trout lines, please. There's a lot of that. Five feet. Wow, oh, some plastic. Wow, guys. Yeah. If I could actually make a, a good cast, oh, I thought that was one. Yeah. If I could actually make a good cast, I might Don't catch one. This is a flipping stretch here that looks amazing to me, so I hope you catch one. Oh, that felt like one too. Everything feels like a fish. You can tell Keith Carson is jazzed up this morning. Quick limit in the boat. How much depth do you have under that mat? Like it when it falls. Two, that's good, that's enough. It's enough for a seven pounder to sit under.
Carson's been cranking a lot of these grass edges with a Fritz side five. He's in the top left of your screen. Been five to five yeah, to eight, five to nine feet of water off the edge of I this think grass. With the way the sun's beating down, that's why I'm waiting for you to get a bite. Then shallower grass, he's been punching some of that, and it's got plenty of water under there to punch, like he was telling his co-angler, that you got plenty of room. Meanwhile, Chris Payne adding a third keeper to the mix. Nothing huge, but a keeper nonetheless. Got to have five before you start culling. Chris Payne's on his way there. Meanwhile, Clint Miller has two spotted bass to start his day. Doing his channel swing program with some hard spots with a shaky head. Meanwhile, Chris Payne catching some. Keith Carson with a limit. His limit's now yes. updated on That's Bass Track. <laughs> Extending his lead once again. Got Alex Sherrill in the mix with three fish. But they're all chasing Keith Carson. Now almost to a 10 pound lead. It's an eight pound, five ounce margin right now over Teb Jones, Alex Sherrill, like we mentioned, Clint Miller, Chris Payne, Jacob Walker, Joey Nania, Adam Nye, Sam Fish, Scott Pellegrin. At your top 10 unofficially right now as we go to break, 30 more minutes. We'll bring you another segment coming up right after this. Nationwide Opens Live. The Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live is brought to you by Abu Garcia, Berkeley, Nitro Boats, and by Ranger Boats. You're watching the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live. Been a beautiful morning on Lay Lake, an hour and 40 minute fog delay to get the final day started, but these anglers headed out at 7.55 local time, which is central time, 8.55 Eastern time. They finally made it out there, so they've been fishing for less than two hours, but they've been knocking it out of the park. Keith Carson with a quick limit. Chris Payne with a few fish in the boat as well. Our top 12. Battling it out for Elite Series points, classic spots as well. There's five anglers that if they won today would make the Bassmaster Classic. Meanwhile, there's seven anglers that they would only reap the benefits of a $38,000 Ranger Top Cash Award and the nice hardware from winning in a Bassmaster Open. Adam Nye, first pictures with him today, first video of him, and he's hooked up for us. That's a better one. Adam's one of our anglers that if he won today would make the classic from Wisconsin. Fat. Let's hope they're all here. Maybe we can get an update quick. from him and see what we've missed this morning, how many he has in the boat. Take a walker hooked up, hooked up. Did you watch that, Ethan? <laughs> sitting there popping it off, and she ate it while I was sitting there popping it. Nah, it's a little spot. Hunter, if I lose another one, I'm kicking you out. <laughs> Great opportunity for these anglers to showcase their skills on live. Jacob Walker with his first keeper. Local angler, works down the road at a tackle shop, marks outdoors. Friend John Norris used to work on the bass staff, manages that. 
Walker, our day one leader, 17 pounds and change on day one, only 10 pounds or 13 pounds yesterday gives him a total of 30. Five pounds behind Keith Carson to start the day. And with Carson's great day three so far, Walker's going to definitely need an upgrade. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I just flipped down one stretch. I'm trying to fish an offshore tree right now. It's been kind of slow this morning. I kind of expected that. My days really don't get going until about 10, 11 o'clock. Real small keeper and one decent one in the box right now, but pretty average for how my last few days went. Not too worried about it right now. So just gotta wait for that sun to warm it happens. Trying to make another one of these bite. Starting to get some action. Adam Nye catches one, Jacob Walker catches one, meanwhile Sam Fish Registers two on bass check. Scott Pellegrin another fighting. one. Starting to catch a lay. Every now and then, you see two or three just come off to the head. They were like this the other day, and as soon as they killed the turn, I came up here and caught one like every cast. Adam Nye started the day in fourth, but six and a half pounds behind. Fishing upriver, he said, I mentioned it earlier, he loves, he loves it when they cut off the water. Because when, if you, if you think about Lay Lake, it's a lake, but there's a river portion which is much narrower. When those generators turn on from the dam and they start pushing water, or pushing water out of Logan Martin into Lay Lake, the water level will rise. And so up the river, it's so much narrower with one turbine, it'll rise a little bit. With two turbines, it rises even more. Three, it rises even more because they're pumping water and such from a big lake like Logan Martin into a, such a narrow portion of lay. So that water level rises and fluctuates. He likes it when it, they cut it off and it starts to slow down and then it comes to a stall and those fish position back up uh, in some of those standard places that they would be uh, when there's no current going. He fished all the way up at the dam on day one, only caught one. So he came back down the dam a little bit. And for folks wanting to know about Lay Lake and what it's like this week, 56 to 58 degree water temperatures. Fall slash winter transition is completely on right now and the fishing's actually getting pretty good. At Lay Lake, you can see that by having 17 and a half pounds a day is leading this event. Keith Carson with a seven pounder as well. And a flip side from some of our guys, like Keith Carson with seven largemouth, three spots, Clint Miller, eight largemouth, two spots. Adam Nye has caught two largemouth and eight spots up the river. Caught about a four pound spot of bass yesterday and now we're over with Clint Miller, guy who's had almost a six pounder both days. He had a 6-0 on day one for the big bass of the day. Caught that on a shaky head. Then he had another one five and change yesterday. Keep, huh? Oh yeah. Adam and I's co-anglers hooked up. That would be Connor Graham. Number two, anyways. Let's see that tree. I don't know what's going on there. Eh? Something's changed. I mean, I was, I was at least catching little fish, a lot of little, or not a lot, but I was getting bit yesterday. Probably 
putting their last flip on it. There we go. They don't want to eat. Be a keeper at least. Oh, finally another keeper. Away from a six pounder. Man, you don't like me or something? What, I, what, what, what have I done to you? You don't have to, not to like me, man. I'm happy you talk. I done put you on a three pound and you, you're going to get an attitude with a shit. You catching threes, I'm catching one. I need to catch that one. I done, my wheels done run off the wagon. Oh, yeah. Magnum. Clint Miller, Alex Prince having a. I'll take two more just time like together. To get me, get me started. Wouldn't be the opens if we didn't have some blooper moments and some. Funny conversations that you get to see and hear. You see right there, Jacob Walker putting on a white soft plastic. You also see Chris Payne's co-angler. I think that is Michael Elrod with one. He's got now two fish as a co-angler side. Clint Miller's hooked up again. And there's a couple fish in this clint spot now. Just got any meat to it. I said, I don't know. What's the begging? Come on, baby. I need you bad. I need you bad to get in this boat. I'm swinging it. Oh, get in there! Woo! It ain't big. I'm just excited to catch one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Thank you. Pull us out a minute. He was. I told you he was just getting started. Thank you, Jesus. He ain't a giant, but he's solid. Let's try to see if he says a weight. 264. About a 210. One more and I can give a score tracker up that I ain't been putting it on the score tracker I get a limit. It's good to know Clint Miller's about to put in his bass try because I was about to do it for him. Four fish in the boat for Clint. One more and he'll have his limit. He's got a two and a half, a two ten. I retire a lot. Just about up. Pound and a quarter, maybe pound and a half, and then a pounder. Expect that to be four for around seven, seven ish. I've caught some, caught four pounders off this bank, but. I can look up and catch old kicker somewhere today. Get in the middle of this. It'd be sweet, you know what? <laughs> and that'd be, be sweet. I ain't trying to be a goober head and slow fishy, but I got to try that. Connor Graham with another one from the back of Adam Nye's boat. 
How in the world do we have two northern guys, Connor Graham, oh, they're kind of spread out everywhere. Adam Nye, in the Wisconsin Minnesota region, both fishing mm -hmm. together today? What are the odds of that down in central Alabama? They had a bunch there in practice too. They're just all little. Yeah. Whatever, it's a little limit for you. Yeah, better than zero. Three fish for Connor Graham. Oh, Keith Carson's oh, hooked up. Oh, stay on, please. Wow. Please stay on. God, it's barely hooked. Come on, come on. Oh, barely hooked, come on. Come on. Yeah, that's a three. Yes. Ah, almost three. It's up or two anyway. Yes. That was the exact cast that I caught the uh, five or six on practice. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I got five. And uh, let's see. What Time to call for Keith Carson. Yeah. So, oh, no, one yellow. Yellow's, yellow's a big one. Here, white's pretty small. Blue's a good one. Oh, red's small. Yellow. Those are all good ones. And this is a good one. So now I got four good ones. Okay, cool. All right, so I think red. Yeah, this one's definitely smaller. Look at that coal. Good camera, <laughs> she got that coal right there. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good coal. So I'll take it. One thing I like to do is I always like to uh, put put my five back in. One, two, three, four, five. I got, got him? Yes, dude, nice job. <laughs> you have any fish on the floor, I didn't want them. No, no, that's a good one. Nice job, okay, that goes back, that one. So I got five in the well. All right. Yeah. Stop. There you go. My nice job. Sore. I didn't want to touch him. Let me open this. <laughs> you got two to go. John Gould. Hell yes. Keith Carson. Now I probably got over 10. Man, if I remember right, I think John Gould made it to the final day at Neely Henry, just a couple lakes up on the coast as a co What's that? I'll have to check. Oh. I made a I made a bad cast, or at least I, I thought I made a bad cast anyway. And caught that one. My bait was out in like I got like a five foot running crank bait out in like twelve feet of twelve or fifteen feet of water. Yours was? Yeah. Great job, dude. Yeah. Yeah, they're here. We're gonna um we're gonna be around big fish all day long. I don't know, you know, I don't always know when the bites will come or whatever, but all I know is we're gonna be around them. And the, I I think I got like uh oh, over ten pounds. I got two threes, like a two and a half, a two, and then like a one pounder. So whatever that equals. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, somewhere around that, 11, 12 maybe. I need another three and, uh, you know, and then a big bite. And we're not even to the stretch yet. I'm not even to the good stuff. I'm just taking my time. I don't want to rush anything. I want to have an open mind and, uh, you know, just... Just let the river reveal itself to me what, what I need to do. It's 
For all I know, we may not even get a bite on the good stretch. You know? No, it's it's uh it's like miles long. And the bites come in different areas every every time. Um so you just got Yeah. <laughs> John Gould from the back of the boat, catching a keeper. And I mentioned, I thought I saw his name from Neely and I remember from Bassmaster Live watching him and he actually won the co-angler side. Good job catching that one, dude. Oh, yeah. Keith knows that he's got a yeah. gunslinger like that in the back awesome. of the boat, but John Gould trying to go yeah, you will. two wins the, on the, the open. The real big Cody ones are in that, this year. in that grass. Gould started the day in eighth, three pounds off the pace. So We're just going to go up to the mouth of this creek here, just another uh, 80 yards or so. Well, unless that guy hits it first. some good ones we're gonna go run it's like some new water I have uh, I have 10 isolated mats from here to the dam that are teeny little isolated mats that I'm very confident no one found and no one's fished because they are so hard to find and uh, you know I, I really focused in on that I had days of practice where I didn't have a bite and I was just looking for uh, where I wanted to fish um, you know, I'm, I'm, like I said earlier, I'm so confident fishing rivers growing up on the St. John's that, uh, you know, if we can get a few more quality bites, I'll go run some of those. We'll, we'll flip out some big ones, more than likely. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Worst you can get is 12. Keith Carson outlining his outlining his day. Right. He's got some stuff on up underneath his sleeve, but he might not even need it. Yeah. Right now with a about a ten pound bag at least after that call. I would say more, but he put him in bass track at five for nine. That call that has not popped in yet would probably give him another pound, pound and a half at least. And Keith Carson has had a dominating morning after an hour and forty minute fog delay. He has yes. charged into That's a, a limit, pounder. charged into a coal, and has Whoa. everything right in front of him. The opportunity to win today. Oh, we'll be back oh, with Bass oh, Live the last it. three hours of the day. What, what? Join oh, us at noon right Eastern motor. time oh, until 3 p.m. Eastern time Man. when they start checking in, and we will see how it goes. But Keith Carson okay. on top, on. Teb Jones, Stay Alex on. Sherrill trying to cut that gap. Clint Miller yeah. finally putting some fish <laughs> in the boat. We'll get a Bass Track update yes. from him during our break. But, hey, go get some food. We'll be back Let's after an hour break. break on Bassmaster Live at Lay Lake. Yeah, that I caught the uh, five or six on practice. You're watching the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live. State of Alabama hosting our final BassPro.com Bassmaster Eastern Open of the 2020 season, Lay Lake. Making it happen here the first week or so of December on the Coosa River. We were here a few weeks ago for the College Classic Bracket and got to see a crankbait factor for one Trevor McKinney who punched his ticket to the 2021 Bassmaster Classic as well as his ticket to the Opens next year to represent the College Series. Now we will crown an Opens champion here on the final day at Lay Lake. Someone's gonna go to the Bassmaster Classic via this event. People are going to gain Elite Series points to be able to qualify for that 2021 rookie class of anglers. It's going to be a great final three hours of fishing today. The top 12 pros, the top 12 co-anglers, all competing on this legendary Coosa River fishery. And this is how our unofficial leaderboard, it looks very similar to the way it started the morning, 
because Keith Carson's on top, Clint Miller's in second, but that margin has grown much more. Six pounds and change instead of three and a half pounds. Teb Jones moving up from sixth into third. Alex Sherrill from eighth into fourth. Chris Payne sitting there in fifth, staying steady. KJ Queen, one to watch. We'll talk about him later today as well. Sixth place right now, Joey Nania, Adam Nye, Sam Fish, and Jacob Walker make up for your top 10. The last two anglers would be Scott Pellegrin and Keith Poche filling out our top 12. And Keith Carson, really, the question was, an hour and 40 minute fog delay, what yes. is this gonna do That's to the top 12? Who is going to adjust the best and make it happen? For Keith Carson on day one, he caught all of his weight before 9.30. On day two, didn't have a fish until nine o'clock. Today, got started very quickly. We took off at 7.55 Central Time, and he had a limit before anyone else in the field. With a couple good ones, he had a three pounder to start, some two and a halfs as well. Now he's the only one in double digits, 11 pounds unofficially right now, giving him 46 pounds, four ounces. <laughs> and he's done the that majority, if not bike. all, of his work this week on a Berkeley Fritz Side 5 crankbait. He called Stay that up. color Stay up. Stay up, Ghost Morning Dawn. Stay on, please. Please stay on. And that has been the color of more translucent, translucent shad pattern. And he has been cranking the edges of this grass all around Lay Lake, fishing new water every day, but also leaning on some stretches. Yeah. This one right here, <laughs> the same cast yes. that he made to catch a five pounder in practice. He caught this three pounder, two and a half, two and three quarter pounder right there. And we're back out live with Keith Carson after a strong morning session for the Florida angler. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's number two for you. Good job. Yeah, they're here. All right, so uh, so the fishing slowed down. You know, we're in one of those dead periods. Uh, every day, you know, I've been having dead periods where I go for a few hours without a bite. Um, this is my best stretch, and. I've had the most bites here, but they've all been like non-keepers. So um, it just tells me the big fish just aren't firing right now. Uh, when those big fish decide to fire, they will. They're just, they're laying back. They're letting the small ones eat. You know, they're, they're giving them a chance to eat too. Um, you know, I don't know if I'll run back through this again. Um, I'm, I've got some flipping stretches up ahead that I'm going to hit. And if I can catch a three pounder in the next hour, um, then I'm going to run isolated mats. I have about 10 isolated mats from here to the dam, and, I, and I'm confident one of them will produce a, a quality fish. But, but um, with the way that the fish are slapping at the crankbait, you know, I've probably had like at least 10 or 15 just completely miss it. Um, with the way they're slapping at it, um, that worries me that um, it worries me that I could flip into those mats and they'll just like pick the pinchers up on the uh, for flipping. And, uh, you know, when, when I go flipping, I'm only going for a couple big bites. And so, you know, that's kind of got me uh, a little um, conservative or whatever, cautious on the flipping right now. Um, so I think this next hour, if I can catch a quality fish, you know, I got four good ones and one, like, one pounder. Uh, if I can get rid of that one pounder, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my foot on the gas. And if not, I might just go back to the power plant area and just try to catch another, you know, two and a half, three pounder. And... Uh, you know, and then I'll just have to let the let the cards fall where they do. You know, if the other guy jacks them, hey, good for him. But uh, I'm just doing the best I can right now with what I got, you know. Yeah. Yeah, update your text track. Oh, is it called text track? I thought it was bass track. Oh. <laughs> it is both. You're correct, Keith. <laughs> yeah, ass track. It's ass track for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about, nah, I don't know. John Gould, his co-angler, adding another fish to his tally. Only three fish for the co-anglers each day, five fish for the pros, nine maximum fish for the co-anglers, 15 for the pros, and Keith, 
sitting in a good position for sure. As we look at the unofficial leaderboard, I'm looking at Bash Track right now, sitting there at 46 pounds, four ounces. Second place, Clint Miller, 39.13. Nowhere near done because this just means that six pounds, seven ounce gap right now, that simply means that Clint Miller basically needs a 14 pound bag, which he has done each day of competition. So for Keith Carson, he is not safe right now. Clint Miller still has that opportunity to close that gap. Nothing outrageous today by any of these anglers. 11 pounds being the biggest bag. A couple guys in that eight to nine pound range. Well, I mean, I'm doing the same thing I've been doing. I just been, I ain't got my kicker bite yet, and I, I ain't put the, had one more decent one I lost, but it, catching a lot smaller fish today. I don't know if because I've caught so many here or in my spots or the cold front coming in shut them down. I don't really know. We're gonna keep grinding and see what happens. Clint Miller's been focusing. Basically, he's rigged up a few rods, but they're the same rod. A shaky head on a spinning rod. He has been dealing uh, on Lay Lake in these channel swing banks. You'll see him not far from the bank, but he's fishing off the bank a little bit. Hard spots with a shaky head, which means hard spots could be anywhere there's rock or not a silty, mucky bottom, but just hard, solid bottom. Some of those ends of... Uh, Boat ramps, some of those sea walls. Wes logo was mentioning where they might do construction. They might dump some concrete or some rock right there off of them inside. You can see riprap right there with a little bitty boat slip. Any hard spot right there will be good for him and his shaky head. We saw him start to catch a couple quick ones right when we went to our midday break. And during, and during the midday break, he filled his limit. He did put him on bass track like he promised he would. Five for eight pounds. Right team. now, and Clint Miller's on his way, but sticking to his game plan. He really thinks that this is uh, what he needs to be doing. He's caught a six pounder on day one of this event, a five and change yesterday. He said he's caught a six in practice as well. He's caught eight largemouth this week and only two spotted bass. He's not quite sure why some of these areas, these hard spots that should hold spotted bass, are only holding, or majority wise, holding largemouth. But it seems like most of his fish, if not all of them today, are spotted bass. So it might be one of those deals where there were some largemouth. It was pretty nasty the last few days of competition weather-wise. And the largemouth were set up there and they might have moved to shallower grass with that sun or they might have moved to some different structure. Or like he said, he might have caught them all out. But Clint has definitely caught more largemouth than spotted bass every day of this tournament except for today. We've got our second 10 pound limit of the day. Teb Jones jumping from sixth to third unofficially on this final day, 10 pounds, eight ounces, just shy of what Keith Carson has. Teb Jones is trying to right a wrong a few years ago. Jones lost on the Arkansas River by one ounce, missing out on his classic hopes and dreams. He would love to be able to make that dream a reality today. Adam Nye during the break has added a couple fish. He has four fish for five pounds. We're watching him on the right side of the screen. He's an eighth yeah. unofficially right now. Yeah, I mean, day's kind of been slow. I think them not moving a lot of a lot of the current last night didn't reposition any of these fish. Um, didn't really reload a lot of this stuff. Might have to start running around stuff here later on in the day. Try to find some more fish. We're just fishing down one of my best stretches now. If I don't catch one on the stretch, I'll probably run up a little ways and fish a few things I didn't get to the last few days and see what happens. Got four of them right now, but they're not much. I have to make something happen. If you closed your eyes and heard Adam Nye speak, you'd probably think it was Bob Downey, Bassmaster Elite Series rookie this year. It sounds exactly like Adam Nye. They're both in that same Wisconsin, Minnesota region, and this is some of what Adam Nye is doing. He's up in the river, 
Not necessarily in the river where you, you can see the dam, but just up in the winding river portion of it. Fishing a green pumpkin jig. And some of these seams and these current breaks, some of the wood and laydowns and whatnot. A lot of traffic in his areas the last couple days actually made the water a little more stained than it would be because of the boats running back and forth, sloshing that water against the clay banks when the water is high. And then when it recedes, it pulls all that dirty water down the, down the river into the lake. So that dirty water kept coming to him. He actually has been doing much better when they shut off the current. That's why he wasn't worried earlier when he had two fish. Uh, he said normally 10, 11, 12 o'clock is when he starts to have his best time of day because the water slacks off and he can pinpoint where these fish are a little bit better. They get super tight to those undercut bank when the water is flowing as much as it is. Anything to get out of the current and position. We got Jacob Walker on the left yeah. side of our screen. Started the day in third. Well, we uh, all the bites I've had today have been really directly on the trees last two days they haven't been so target related i don't know if it's maybe the sun the, you know the bluebird skies or uh what's going on but all the bites we've had have definitely been more target oriented i've had three or four pretty big bites up in these lay down trees with mats up in them and i hadn't got one good one but there's a uh, you know there's a couple i've left left behind, but I think as the sun gets out, it's going to help me out. I'm just going to stay patient and keep moving along. I think, like I said, I think it's going to pick up as the day goes on. <clears throat> but it's definitely, they're definitely a lot more uh, target oriented. Like I said, they're, they're holding on these trees. So we're going to keep going along, try to pluck a couple big ones off like i said i got one i got one pretty good one i need need four more rob's got them two good ones that is jacob walker we'll show you some of those catches we saw one this morning flipping some braid and his white jig and also a uh, structure bug texas rig And these were all his couple small ones that he mentioned before our midday break. And then this was during the commercial break, a solid one right there during the midday break, one hour long. Solid fish there for Jacob Walker, our day one leader, 17 pounds, four ounces. He said to me last night, with most confidence in his voice. He's pumping gas and I gave him a call and he said, I'm going to win this tomorrow. I don't care what the leader does. I'm, I, I just know I'm gonna win. And I've heard a lot of people say that over the years and some have won, some have not won, but I like the confidence from Jacob. And if you notice, we talk about the current flow and you can't really tell it in all of our other pictures, but watch those bubbles right there by his trolling motor. Sweep by, you can see the boat is sitting still and you can see that water coming by. Now you see that uh, the way the current is flowing, it's not too tremendous, but just an ever consistent flow today until about noon. So you got about another hour of flow until they shut it off. And then when it gets down to the beeswax area, that's about, uh, it takes about another you know 40 minutes for it to cut off there. So Walker will need to get it done when the water's still flow and consistent. But like Adam Nye said, it's been better for him when it cuts off. So maybe the same could be said for Jacob Walker today. We have Chris Payne on the right side of our screen. Started the day in fifth place. Got to talk to him late, late last night because I found out his phone was fried. So he uh, called me on someone else's phone to get in contact and got to run down his game plan. He's been junk fishing a lot this week and he wasn't just saying that to be vague. He's been covering a lot of different water, a lot of different baits. He's fished Lay Lake a bunch, would consider himself probably a local. He's going to fish a lot more grass today, he said. 
more largemouth focus because of the sunshine. He's going to fish from Spring Creek down towards the Lay Lake Dam. So Spring Creek and South, he's making a move right now. But he said he was. you can end up seeing him probably punch some grass at some point. He's obviously fishing like a little riprap bank right there, maybe some grass on it. But Payne was going to try to do that once he caught some bigger fish. And here's some of his morning. It hasn't panned out as great for him as he'd hoped, but he has four for about seven pounds right now. Missing that kicker and Maybe he'll get his kicker for his fifth fish and it'll be his limit. Four box now, Keith Carson, Clint Miller, Jacob Walker, and Adam Nye. Chris Payne just made a move, so that's why he's not there. And Keith Carson, he's making a move now. Clint Miller now. I mentioned it earlier when we came out from the unofficial leaderboard. The one to watch today that a couple people are watching. Daryl Gleason sitting at home watching this. Timmy Tompkins probably sitting home watching this. KJ Queen. Now there's a lot of ways to qualify for the Bassmaster Elite Series. And in the Opens for 2020, there's three different ways. You can qualify via the Eastern Opens points race, the Central Opens points race, or the overall points race. If you fish both divisions, you're entered into the overall points race. Even if you fish one division, you're entered, but your odds go up fishing both leagues or both divisions. For KJ Queen, he's sitting fifth overall, which means he would not qualify from the overall, but in the Easterns right there, you see the highlighted guys, Patrick Walters, he's already on the elites. You can take him off. Pat Schlapper, he is the Bass Nation champion, so he's already qualified. Justin Atkins from the overall finished second, he qualified. Brian New from the overall leader, he qualified. And you've got KJ Queen down there, last man in for the Eastern Opens. I mention that because if he moved up from 10th place today where he started in the overall tournament, if he moves up from 10th and wins this event, he has to win it, second won't do it. If he won this event, he would gain enough points in the overall points race to surpass Mark Frazier, which would then take away Daryl Gleason's uh, ability to qualify because of the double qualifiers, the way they work out. Gleason benefits from Mark Frazier being double qualified. If KJ bumped Frazier, Frazier would not be double qualified. He'd still make the elites, but he wouldn't double. And KJ would double, which means Timmy Tompkins would be the one to get it. So 11 of our Elite Series invites are solidified. The only spot left, which is right now in Daryl Gleason's pocket, will be determined by KJ Queen today if he was to somehow come back from 10th place, 8 pounds, 10 ounces back and win. Then he can uh, help Timmy Tompkins make a dream come true and qualify for the Elites. Otherwise, Daryl Gleason, the guy we saw Fish the Bassmaster Classic in 2020 via winning at Toledo Bend in an open last year. And then he almost had a shot, or he had a shot, he almost won at Sam Rayburn this year for the Central Opens. Daryl Gleason said, hey, I'm going to try to qualify for the Elite Series. It would be a lifelong dream. And he notched just four points short, four points short of doing Second it on his own. Current. But he's relying on Mark Frazier right now, who did jump up yesterday and double qualify. Saturday. I mean, I'm not seeing anything right here. I know we're on the shallow side, but I can't tell. Yeah, but I'm now I'm thinking that might be why they were slapping at it. Maybe the current's off, and that's why that's why the small ones took over, and that's why they're slapping at it because the current's off. If I'm right, I don't know. If the current's off, then flipping will probably be the deal. It'll be 
sitting out in the If you're just joining us, there's a couple other prizes in store. We talked about the Elite Series qualification with 12 invitees next year. We also will award a classic spot today right, to the winner right. if it's Real Keith dirty Carson. on the edge and clear inside. If someone, there's only five guys who can make the classic by winning today, seven who cannot. If one of those seven wins, I Keith Combs a, will a make big the classic. One in uh, beeswax during the tournament. And uh, that's the pattern I was running because there was like tons of boats. It was like right before weigh in. And, it, and uh, you know, all the water was really dirty, like out. So I ran way to the back of these pockets and it was muddy up to the edge of the mat, but I could tell underneath was still clear. I started throwing that swim jig and had one come out and smoke it. And I set the hook, it just swam right at me and came off. And then obviously for winning, $38,000 Ranger Top Cash Award goes to the Pro Today. $15,000 Mercury Top Cash Award goes to the co-angler that wins. And we mentioned KJ Queen being one of the Elite Series invites and the opportunity to double qualify or just single qualify. He is in no matter what, but his dad, Jeff Queen, fished as a co-angler in all the Opens, traveled with his son, and Jeff won the co-angler of the year for the Opens as well. Congratulations to him, all the anglers competing this year. It's a nice It's been a right great here. season of... It's really nice. Very tight finishes. And here's the Falcon Rods Bassmaster Opens Angler of the Year. This was what I was mentioning. KJ Queen's already in the Elites via the Eastern Opens because we had a couple double qualifiers ahead of him. If he was to close that gap right there, an eight-point margin from Mark Frazier to himself, He's in 10th, means he needs to gain nine points to do that. He has to win the event. He would jump Mark Frazier and double qualify, helping out Timmy Tompkins. Otherwise, Mark Frazier stays double qualified from the centrals and the overall, which has Daryl Gleason, who was the first man out in the centrals. It has Daryl Gleason in the Elite Series. And the crazy thing about these points, Brian New won $10,000 for the Falcon Rods Angler of the Year Award by one point over Justin Atkins. Matt Robertson was only 11 points off the pace, Mark Frazier 19. And you look down there, Kenta Kimura, Jason Christie, Scott Martin, Joel Willard, Todd Castledine, a great top 10. But Jason Christie was leading the overall points race coming into the final event. Him and Mark Frazier were first and second, and they dropped to fourth and seventh in the Falcon Rods Angler of the Year race, just by a slightly below average finish here at Lay Lake. That just goes to show you how much movement can happen from one tournament to the rest, even after an eight tournament stretch of events. Jason Christie qualified via the Central, so did Kinta Kamira. Scott Martin qualified for the Elites from the Eastern Opens. KJ Queen, Eastern Opens as well. Basically the entire top eight right there qualified for the Elites in some form or fashion. Come on, be here. This is a nice man. Hmm. See, Keith Carson's been fishing a Berkeley Fritz side five crankbait in, sh in shad patterns. Ghost Morning Dawn is what it's called. But he's also got a flipping pattern as well. He's caught some fish this week. Flipping a couple different creature baits, the creature hog, the bunker hog, and the pit boss, all of them in watermelon candy. That's been the color for him. 
watermelon candy, even though it's pretty stained water, like he was mentioning. I think current's still on. I guess there's just no current back there. Nice mat coming up. He said he had a 10 isolated right mats, now. very small, if maybe hidden, over here. overlooked mats that he thinks he can get at least a key fish out of. Hmm. Crankbait? Yeah. We got one more small stretch up ahead where two days ago in the tournament we had a bunch of bites flipping. Me and my co. And it's a nice deep stretch. I just want to see if, um, you know, maybe get one bite there. Maybe just get one. Man, there's a lot of baits around here, huh? I'll tell you, I've caught more fishing line and, and trout lines here than like I've ever caught in my life. But I guess I also don't really throw crankbait much, so that could be why too. Keith Carson in charge, now making a game plan adjustment. This is what bass tournaments are made of. Good start with his primary game plan, throwing that Berkeley Fritz side five on the edge of grass lines, catching 10, 11, 11 and a half pounds of fish, a limit culling. Now he's making an adjustment, trying to punch up and flip up a good fish or two to cull out. He's got a small one pounder in there still but some solid spotted bass to go with. It's still that six and a half pound margin over Clint Miller, Teb Jones, Alex Sherrill, Chris Payne, Joey Nania, KJ Queen, Adam Nye, Scott Pellegrin, and Sam Fish. That's your top 10. Make sure you come back with us after the commercial break for some more Nationwide Opens Live from Lay Lake. We're happy to bring you the final day of the open season for 2020. We'll be right back after this commercial break. The Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live is brought to you by Power Pole, Skeeter Boats, Yamaha, and by Toyota. You're watching the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live. Welcome back to Lay Lake, and we're going to break down the last couple hours of the open season right here. Keith Carson in control of this event by about six and a half pounds over Clint Miller right now. Teb Jones in third, Alex Sherrill top, top four, and Chris Payne rounding out our top five right now. 
It's getting tied out on Lay Lake, but Keith Carson's keeping everyone else at an arm's distance. You see 39 pounds all the way down to 35 pounds basically covers the rest of the top 10. And we're out with Clint Miller right now, second place, looking to make some upgrades. Only five for eight pounds right now or so on the Bash Track leaderboard, fishing some of these hard spots, maybe some gravel, some rock, some concrete, things that are just off of these sea walls and whatnot, some of the man-made structures that have some hard spots, some cleared off areas where that black hair grass grows up off the bottom, lays on the bottom. Keith Carson back to the crank pit on the left side of your screen. And we've got to keep with, we got to keep a uh, Tabs on Clint Miller by way of Wes Logan and Kyle Jesse giving us an update earlier. Long. Now they've moved over to the man on top, Six, Keith Carson. So we're going to get a little bit of conversation with Wes Logan about that. Wes, Keith's been mostly cranking a Berkeley, Berkeley Fritz side five. Is that really a big deal? We saw that in the College Classic bracket just a few weeks ago. Cranking such a big deal at Lay Lake, some of those hard spots and whatnot. And Keith Carson seems to find a thing on the grass line. What he's doing, uh, I was just talking with Kyle about it, and it, I, I honestly wouldn't have figured the deal out that he's doing. Uh, he's on the edge of a grass line that's like, I mean, just on a riverbank, and it, it really doesn't look that special. And it may be a deal where it's a bank that's been getting overlooked because uh, you know the lake's been getting a lot of pressure with all the boats on it from the, I think, 160 some anglers in the tournament. So, I mean, maybe the less obvious bank was the deal, and it just happened to have a little grass on it. But he's not really targeting the grass from what I can say. He's flipping a little bit, like on a th thicker clump. But mostly it seems like he's targeting if they're the furthest piece of grass out. I think that's where his bites are really coming from. And I don't know if it's fish moving up and then moving back down, just getting on the first piece of structure they see. But it seemed like uh, where we just left from, on a little bit down from where we're at, he said was his best stretch, uh, that he's got the most bites on. And actually when we rolled up, his co angler caught one uh, about right off the bat when we got here. So, I mean, like I said, he said it's his best stretch, but he said he's got a couple of isolated mats from here to the dam i think he said 10 or 12 that he thinks if he gets a bite in it uh that it'll be a good fish obviously most of the time flipping on lay you're going to get a big bite um if you happen to get a bite and i think he said he's got four quality fish or decent fish and then one small one and if he happens to get that one big bite flipping i mean it could be it could be close to being over with the water temperature being 56, you know, 57 degrees, it's still mid 50s, even though the air temperature this morning was in the low 30s. People often think, hey, cranking when it's cold outside, when we feel cold, you got to go with red and whatnot. But he's been throwing a shad pattern, a more translucent shad based, even with the stained water. That's that's the deal in the fall when these when these bass are chasing bait fish and not crawfish. When do they make that transition? What's the water temp at lay where maybe they get off the shad stuff and start getting on that browns and reds because the shad pattern has definitely been good for Keith Carson this week. Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously a shad pattern is going to be good year round. So, I mean, you can always keep that in your arsenal most of the time. But anytime me on lay or anywhere else, I mean, mostly when you get around that 50 degree water mark, I mean, if you get below there, stuff starts changing the crawfish start making you know changing their colors making moves getting on rocks and stuff because of the heat i mean most of the time but what's an uh, interesting fact with lay is there's so much grass that you can still fish grass when the water temperature's in the 40s low 40s mid 40s and it'll act just the same as a rock does i mean it's still going to hold some heat they'll just get right up under the mats and stuff like that but i mean on the red deal normally around 50 degrees anything below that's when all the red starts coming into play and that normally doesn't start coming into play 
in this area of the country until, you know, January into late February. Because, I mean, even in December, into November, December, you're thinking it's wintertime. But here lately in the past 10 years, it's really gotten cold wintertime from January to March. So that's when your reds really start playing, I think. This reminds me a lot of the team championship one year on Norfolk Lake where all the people came from across the country to Arkansas and it was 30, 20, maybe even in the teens cold outside, but the water temp was in the 50s and top water was still factoring. So it seems like these fish are still shallow. Are you surprised to see Keith Carson catch a 7-3 big bass yesterday for the tournament, but also to have one 5-11 on day one that two fish have accounted for basically 13 pounds of his 35 total going through two days no 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 I mean not surprised at all on lay I mean there's eight nine ten there's 11 pounds. I mean it's not uncommon I mean it's uncommon but for somebody to catch an 11 12 pounder on lay I mean it is possible I mean with all the you know in the past they had the marks outdoors tournament and it'd be a 500 boat tournament and they had it every year and they would give a bag out of uh, just fingerling bass to every team and they would let them go at their first stop every, I mean, all over the lake. So, I mean, it's been a good stocking program for the lake. Unfortunately, they don't, they don't do that anymore. But with them doing that, I mean, it put Florida strain largemouth from one end to the other. And everybody knows how fast those fish grow. And with the grass, as much grass is present in the lake, I mean, those fish just have a, a great environment to thrive in. A lot of bait, the whole Coosa River's got a bunch of bait. But, I mean, if it wouldn't surprise me. It may not happen because we're almost over with the tournament, but an eight or nine pounder wouldn't have surprised me if somebody caught it in the tournament. Just, I mean, I've seen them. I've seen them get caught. I know they're here, and it's, it doesn't really surprise me. It's surpri it, the surprising thing to me is there wasn't more big fish caught over the five-pound mark. I mean, that was kind of interesting to me, especially with the weather yesterday. I felt like the weather Thursday night going into yesterday morning, that warmer night with the rain, I thought the big fish, if, if you were going to get a bite, it might be a big one, but it actually seemed to be tougher just on the weights. I know a few people caught them a little bit better, but it didn't go near like I thought it would. So Wes, last thing, just explain to us and the viewers at home the current situation. So they said today it would be more of a consistent outflow from uh, Logan Martin in delay, 5 a.m. to about noon, which we're hitting that noon time period right around now. What's that affect where Keith is? Keith's not up in the river portion of it. How long will it take for that flow to stop here? And do you think current has actually affected his bite and helped him because he's on the edge of that stuff? Or does it not really factor where he's at in the lake? No, it, where he's at in the lake, he's easily, I mean, which lay is so small, when they turn it on, you almost see it immediately if you're anywhere from the narrows up. Um, but he's easily far enough up the lake that, I mean, as soon as they cut it off, it's going to be within five minutes at the most that it's just going to stop here. Now, you'll have a little bit of what they call fallout, and then it'll still be moving a little bit, but it's not going to be like a hard, steady current, which it's not hard now. But you'll still have a little water movement for a couple of hours, and a lot of times the fallout is a better time for them because it's not as hard, and they can, the fish can kind of move around and set up where they want to. But, yeah, I'm sure with him being on the river, the main lake, the whole, or the main channel the whole time uh the current's been a big deal for him and i've seen instances where and it really just goes by the day i've seen instances where water being on helps or the water being off helps it really just depends on the day and whatever mood the fish are in but i'm sure it's it's contributed in some way whether it cut off and he caught him or it's on and he catches them well, we've got a couple guys chasing him down. Clint Miller, Teb Jones. Miller's been throwing that shaky head. What do you think he needs to do to be able to catch a kicker bite? Can he continue to do that with a shaky head and do it? And also, Teb Jones, I don't know if you've seen him. He's fishing closest to beeswax. He's been throwing a lot of top water, also a lipless swim jig shaky head. He's really keeping it all in play. But for those two guys to close a six and a half to an eight pound gap right now unofficially, what do these guys need to do in the last two hours of competition? Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to obviously make two big calls. I mean, it's not going to happen with one bite, uh, not because I, I know Miller has already got a limit. I don't know if Chet, Teb Jones does. So he's going to have to, even if he catches an eight pounder, I mean, you're going you're gonna to call out two pounds. So it's only going to be a six pound swing. So you're going to have to have two big bites uh, at some point. But I actually think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but hasn't Clint Miller, Miller caught two big ones the last two days. Am I, am I right on that? Yes, Clint actually caught the big bass on day one, a six-pounder, and then a five and change. So basically, Carson and Miller have been the only ones to have a big one, a kicker, each day of competition. Yeah, so I mean, I, and I think Miller's kept that shaky head in his hand basically the whole tournament. Uh, I mean, if that's the case, then I mean, he just needs to keep doing what he's doing. And I mean, if it's meant to be, the, 
you know, get the bikes. But I don't know about Tiff Jones. I mean, if you, if you finish the whole tournament and you've only caught, you know, two and a half to three pounders, and you, which they don't know that they're behind that far, but you, you would think at the end of the day, they got two hours left. The sun's been out a while. I mean, you might could go swim or flip some grass because that's where the big ones live for the most part. I mean, if it were me and I knew I was that far behind, I would just go swing for the fence. Uh, me personally, swim a jig, flip grass, and try and catch, you know, two five to seven pounders. Last day of the season, last two hours of the season for the Opens. Wes Logan saying you need to go swing for the fences. Wes, I appreciate you uh, giving us some updates from the water. We'll talk to you a little bit later. Stay safe out there and keep Kyle entertained once again as we're watching Clint Miller fish. Right now, West Logan, local to Lay Lake, Logan Martin, that region of the Coosa River, and Neely Henry especially, one of the Bassmaster Lead Series stops for 2021. We appreciate West taking the time to spend a Saturday with our crew and go and follow some of these guys around on one of the lakes he knows the best. Come on, 585. I need you to show. I need your sister. Clint Miller thinking about that five and three quarters that he caught yesterday. Maybe in this spot, and that's why he's calling out and saying, hey, I need more of y'all. Miller, Walker, Nye, and Payne in our four box right now. The only one missing is Keith Carson, our leader, making some moves today. We just got an this update from West Logan yesterday. with him. That's why I called that 585 yesterday. Really? I need him to waller on in there on this shaggy head.
Adam Nye's making a move now. I just need a couple two pounders. Just give me a little bit of weight. All right, we're gonna run out here, throw on that bank, chicken bank a couple times, and then we're out of here. Chris Payne running some docks now. Also some grass, you see that in the background. The way that water willow and other types of grass mix in and fall, lay on each other. Michael Elrod started the day in fourth on the co-angler side. In the boat. Should be his keeper fish. His third keeper fish of the day is Limit. That's a good one. I'd have better heard before before you told me Show it off, Michael. Solid, solid fish. A kicker for the co-angler side for sure. Michael Elrod started the day in fourth. Just two pounds, six ounces behind. If we look at Bash Track. Not everyone's entered, but that's a three pounder. He'll be within one pound of the lead. Scattered patch of grass with all these pretty thick mats, can't get bit. Yeah. Well, these fish look like they're way back in the stuff. All the bites I'm getting swimming have been on the outside too. Long ride. Thirty yards from where I caught that five pounder yesterday. Right here's where I caught it. <laughs> caught, a, caught a great old big on this sea. The one I took in the dorsal fin. I told you about the great bait. Yeah, that's a good one.
Jacob Walker's fish just popped into bass track as well. Sitting in fourth place with his limit for seven and a half. He hadn't pinged up the river all morning. We've seen him on Bass Live though, but just updated now. Still eight and a half pounds off the pace. He knows that's not gonna get it done. He mentioned he has one that he wants to keep and four that he wants to cull. As Chris tries to upgrade his bag, this is the way the unofficial leaderboard shakes out. I know Daryl Gleason's happy as can be that Jacob Walker popped in and popped ahead of KJ Queen, bumping him to eighth. That keeps Gleason's Elite Series hopes alive. Meanwhile, Keith Carson is keeping his dream of making the Bassmaster Classic alive. Firmly in position right now, six and a half pounds ahead still. A little bit of a lull for Carson and Miller and Jones as well, but we'll be right back after the break to see more action from Lay Lake. Live coverage of the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live will return after this short break. You're watching the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live. Welcome back to Lay Lake. And this is the way the long season eight tournaments for the BassPro.com Bassmaster Opens. This is the way it shook out for the overall points race. You can qualify for the Elite Series via the Easterns, via the Centrals, and via overall. So these guys outlasted each other. 55 anglers fished all eight opens, and Brian New beating Justin Atkins out for the $10,000 Falcon Rods Angler of the Year Award. Matt Robertson in third, Mark Frazier in fourth, KJ Queen down the list. Kenta Kamara, Jason Christie, Scott Martin, Joel Willer, and Todd Castledine, those top 10. All had great seasons, but the top four are advancing and qualifying for the Elite Series. And speaking of Brian New, one point, one single point separated him from first and second for the Falcon Rods Angler of the Year. And we have Brian New on the line, actually. Brian, a great season for you overall. You started it the best way possible, winning at the Kissimmee Chain in Florida, and then you ended it the best way possible, taking home the $10,000 Angler of the Year award for Falcon Rods. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's been a good year. It's been a crazy year, but good. A lot of good things come out of this year. I got married to an awesome, crazy, beautiful, sweet, crazy woman. <laughs> but I'm bass in the in the meantime, and uh, here I am. I'm going to fish the Elite Series, biggest stage on the planet, and I'm looking forward to it. Brian, you're also going to fish the Bassmaster Classic next year. You got that opportunity after winning and knocking that door down at the Kissimmee Chain. For you, there has been a lot of ups and downs, but great seasons overall. Tell me about the last 20 minutes or so of your fishing yesterday when the full field's final day before they cut it. You said you texted me and you said a couple cool things happened the final 20 minutes to even get you to where you are now and to get you that extra $10,000 check. Yeah, so uh, the first day of the tournament was, I mean, it wasn't easy, but it was good. I had a good bag. I was in the top 10, <clears throat> and I knew it wasn't going to be easy to go back and, and honestly even catch a bass yesterday. Um, so I grinded it out, and I finally caught a limit, and I go forever. I've got literally 15 minutes to go before I have to be checked in. I'm about three or four miles from the ramp, and I catch one. I mean, I don't know what it was, but looking at my weight and, and how small my other fish were, it, ha it had to be a three pounder. I flip it in the boat, I call a one three, and I knew at that point that I want or I, I qualified for the elites. So I was jacked up, I was excited. You know, I was, that was awesome. But I was still like, man, I really wanted to win Angler of the Year and this is not gonna be enough. <laughs> I come in and it's all said and done now. I pulled it off. <laughs> Just a blessing from God is all I can say. Uh, hard work and um, blessings, man. That's all you can do. Well, there's a lot, of, a lot of things that can happen with one point. There's a lot of things that happen in the opens just by the, the narrowest of margins. Guys winning events by an ounce or so, 
qualifying for the elites. Obviously, you want to fish professionally. It's taken you some time. You've been one of the best co-anglers in the world from the back of the boat, learned and jumped to the front and have had so much success from the front. What do you expect to see from yourself next year now that we have the schedule out and you get to see that now and not just look at it, but actually say, hey, I'm fishing these lakes next year. What does Brian New need to do to translate a great 2020 and a great you know, last three or four years for you into a great 2021 rookie year on the elites? Uh, you know, well, I look forward to every tournament. I mean, there's definitely some lakes on there that I'm not super excited about, but you know what? That's all good. I mean, there's a lot of places I've never been on the schedule. Um, and I like going to places I've never been. I've, something's happened in the last few years about the way that I fish. And, and not only that, I think the way fishing has evolved. And I just figured out a way to make it work. Um, never have. I mean, not always have the greatest practices, but you know, I've just been fortunate to make it work most of the times, and and I'm looking forward to it. Um, I mean, it's the elite series, man. We're gonna go, we're gonna go see what we can do and try to make a living, and um, you know, catch some of them, some of them bass. So, Brian, explain that to the folks at home who are watching the Opens. They know that this is possibly the stair step, whether they fish locally, just weekends, college, high school or co-anglers that are looking to you for some encouragement. You made that step and worked your way up from, you know, the North and South Carolina region to the back of the boat regionally, nationally, and then now to the front of the boat, and you've had success at every step along the way. For you, when did you know it was time to make those jumps from each step, whether it was local to national or back of the boat to front of the boat? When did you kind of get that, hey, I, I'm gonna try this, and I think it's the right time? Man, like, I always knew from the time I was a kid, I mean, I lived on the lake my entire life, grew up fishing, just not not for bass, but just fishing. And, and then I got into bass fishing, but I always knew I wanted to do it. And obviously, you know, I didn't have a boat and couldn't afford to just go head in and obviously nowhere near um, good enough, you know, when I was a kid. But I just took it one step at a time. I started fishing BFLs as a co-angler, made a little bit of money. So, well, maybe I'll fish the tour as a co-angler. Did that, did well, made a little bit of money. Learn, you know, I'm continuously learning and getting better the whole way. And uh, Keith Carson's got him a yeah. big one, it looks. He's hooked up. <laughs> this will be, this will be a, uh, maybe a door shutter. It's a good, uh -oh. good call for him for sure. But yeah, so, you know, I, I just worked my way up, learned and tried to save money because this is not a cheap sport whatsoever. I mean, it's very, very expensive from boats to equipment to entry fees and um, being gone from home, uh, those bills still come and you've got to pay them. But I think the best advice I could give anybody is never try to force it, never try to jump in too deep too quick. Um, because if you do, Say if you just come out of the gate and say, oh, I'm going to go fish the Opens and qualify for the Leafs, chances are that's not going to happen. You're going to go fish the Opens, and good chance you're going to go broke. I mean, that's just the reality to it. Um, I could have very easily done that myself, um, but I was fortunate. I had a good year, and um, now I get to go fish with the big boys. Well, you know what it's like. You close the door at the first event of the year, being uh, the winner at the Kissimmee Chain for Keith Carson. What's going through his mind with, with uh, the final hour or hour and a half approaching? He already had a three and a half pound lead and he's got a solid day today. You always think someone's catching them better than you, but what were you feeling in that final hour and a half of the Kissimmee Chain before you ended up winning? Um, honestly, it was my first bass event, and I made the top 10. I knew I had a good tournament. I knew I wasn't going to fall because of just the way the day was, and I had a decent bag. But I had absolutely zero <laughs> idea on the tournament. Um, now, if I would have, you know, I've been in that position before where I knew I had won the tournament, and I'm just ready to get it over. But there wasn't a Bassmaster Classic berth on the line, so um, it looks like, he probably knows who's going to win, um, and I hope he does. I mean, nothing against anybody else. Everybody works hard, but Keith is a, a heck of a fisherman, and um, he's earned this one. 
and uh, I hope he don't beat me as bad as he looks like he's beating these boys in the Classic next year. <laughs> exactly. Well, hey, Brian, we appreciate you taking the time to stop by. Congratulations on a great year. I mean, we started all the way in January. We're ending in December, and that long eight-event stretch for the Opens yielded an Angler of the Year win for you. Extra money in your pocket, some momentum for your rookie season. And now that you know the schedule, you can get prepped for 2021 and uh, – Make sure you're not doing anything in uh, February through July of next year because you got some tournaments to fish. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's been a long, busy, crazy uh, year, and it's it's crazy that it's over pretty much now. But I've got a long off season, if you want to call it that. Um, it, I mean, it doesn't quit. I mean, I've got a lot of work to do, and I tell you what, me and old Todd Alton, we're fixing to go get busy on some stripers. We got to stock up, and <laughs> we're probably travel together next year and i we got to go stock up on some uh on some meat for uh for dinner for dinner on the roads well brian knew that's your falcon rods angler of the year winner for the bassmaster opens 2020 brian appreciate you stopping by like you said keith carson's hooked up once again it's a small one this time but we're going to get back to the action on Lay Lake. We appreciate Brian. Congratulations to him and all of the other elite series qualifiees from uh the 2020 bassmaster opens Back out with Keith Carson live. That midday lull seems to have ended for Keith Carson. He's caught a couple lately. One What's that? that called for him and one that was small. See what he's been doing the last hour or two, adjustment-wise. Oh yeah, update. Uh, so, um, so guys, I just made a, a call, like a really good call. Um, I caught one that's like maybe two and a half or so, and let go of one pounder. So, I just made a good, solid pound, pound and a half upgrade. Uh, I think I have twelve, maybe more. I really don't know. Um, yeah, I got one that's like that's a you know, solid. Oh crap. Uh, solid three. Uh, I'm hitting this little spot here. There's an exact cast that I have to make and it produces a bite. And I just got two bites and two casts. Uh, I had a dead period there for, I don't know, I want to say like at least two hours. Just went with nothing. Um, uh, I had a lot of bites, but just they were all like 10 inches. Um, so, uh, so, you know, I ran back down to the area I started and down by the power plant and plants right there. Um, and really just trying to uh, call right now. Um, you know, hopefully get a big bite. I'm not really exactly expecting to get a, a giant bite here, um, but just, oh, I thought that was a big one, <laughs> it was grass. Um, but, uh, but you know, there's a lot of three pounders in this area. And so, you know, a couple more threes, you know, or even one more three might put me around 14 pounds. And, uh, so, you know, right now I'm just, uh, that, that's my goal. That guy, the guy in second would have to catch like 17, seven if I catch 14. So, um, you know, that's kind of where I'm at right now. It's a good place to be. That's where he's at right now. And that's Here a we good go. place to be. Now he's hooked up again. Good one. No, oh, maybe it's not that big. I don't know. Looked like a good one when it came up. Yeah, I don't think it's that big. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if he will or not. Man, I, I thought that was a good one. He, his, it looked like a three pounder. Very impressed with Keith Carson today and this week. Finding this pattern that no one else in the top 12 is fishing. I don't think fishing. that one will help either, but. Uh... You saw that happen Wind at Lake Fork for the last 180 elite. degrees. Patrick Walker found I'm something. Back us no off there, here. I'm going to check see if the, he could get rid of one. I don't think he will. How big is that one? Yeah. 
Okay. Let me go. Let me check. While he works on that call and figures out what his smallest one of the day is, we're gonna check them all out in its entirety. It started early this morning, caught a solid fish right here, three pounder for him. Great way to start the day. And then we were back in the 30 degree temperature ranges. Now up to around 55, 60 degrees at Lay Lake. Caught another one doing that as well. He said he caught some punching on day one with some cranking mixed in. Yesterday, all cranking, and today it has been all cranking as well. <laughs> that was a top water bite. Stay on. <laughs> That's a three. Yes. Come on, three. Got to put two anyway. Here we go. That's a good one. Carson looking to make the Bassmaster Classic. Fishing out of John Cox's rig right there, buddy. He's down in Florida. Yes. Yes. Grew up fishing together, and I asked him. Hey, if you win tomorrow like, and you make the classic, so who's getting good. to use the boat sure, since he's used one. his boat for the opens this year and he used it while he was on the elites? Who's using the boat in the classic? He said, can we fish as a team? And I said, I don't think that the other guys would be, would be cool with a, a Carson and Cox combo oh, maybe it's not for that a big. team tournament know. for the classic. Like a good one came up. But he said it would be a yeah, lifetime accomplishment, something that he's been Every angler wants to do, yeah, but I don't know if he will or not. this year was hoping to be able to do yeah, that. I thought that was a good one. Back out live with him now. 1223. We've got less than two hours till we got to be back. Come on. Three pound. Still on the still on the three pounder deal. I said I'm still on the three pounder deal. It's still my goal. One more three pounder. That would be huge. Ooh, wow. I don't know what that was. Four box with Miller, Walker, Nye, and Payne. I'm gonna have to hit this spot again before weigh in. I'll let it sit for an hour, and then uh, and then we're gonna have to hit it because there's a good chance that'll produce a three pounder today. Again.
This ain't the Elite Series, but you're in the boat for a victory, a victory today. I'm not gonna let it, I'm not gonna let it slow me down. Just kind of deal with it, I guess. I don't know if it's a sign I need to go largemouth fishing though. Biggin? Large mouth. Sounds like Jacob Walker's co anglers hooked up. Meanwhile, we're checking out the train. We'll get back over there and see what that fish does for Robert or Gary. Just a little guy. Word from the water as Teb Jones is catching them cast after cast right now. Trying to make that jump from sixth place into first today if he could do that. Kyle Jesse and Wes Logan with Teb Jones watching him now. Bass track Teb has the second biggest bag, tied for the biggest bag. About 11 pounds with Keith Carson, but seven pounds, five ounces behind still. You hear that music, that means we're gonna have a commercial break. We've seen plenty of action. We've gotten some updates, some reflection. It's the final day of school for the Opens for the year. 2020, a eight event open season, four events in the East, four events in the Central Division. Culminating here at Lay Lake, final day. Keith Carson in charge of the tournament. Oh, it's a good one. Meanwhile, we talked okay. to guys who are in charge of the okay, points. Brian New, oh, the Angler oh, of the Year I leader it. and Stay winner. On. Stay on. We'll have some more interviews <laughs> and fish catches yes. coming your way. We got an hour and a half left of coverage today at Lay Lake. We're going to take it down to when they check in. Keith Carson said it. We only have an hour and a half or so left of fishing. And that is what we have for Bassmaster Live. Keith Carson still a six and a half pound lead. Teb Jones hanging tight, moving up. Biggest mover today from six to third. We'll be right back after this commercial break. The Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live is brought to you by Humminbird, Mercury, Minn Kota, and by Talon. You're watching the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live. Let me keep you updated here on the final day of Lay Lake, the final day of the open season. Keith Carson narrowing in on the final classic berth for the Opens that will be doled out one more spot after today, and that is the team championship next week. We will crown a team champion, have a bracket, and somebody will advance, but Keith Carson's looking to take on the next to last classic berth of the year. 46 pounds, four ounces roughly. About a six and a half pound lead over Clint Miller. About a seven and a half pound lead over Teb Jones.
We saw the same thing working out, maybe not against the grass lines, but Trevor McKinney, when he would find a cast with his crankbait, he could catch fish after fish after fish. And we saw Keith Carson go for a long drought, nothing, a lull in the middle of the day, and then pull up and catch two or three fish very quickly off the same cast back to back to back. When he finds them grouped up and he can make that right cast, it can get ugly very quick. And that's what happened this morning. Quick limit, 11 pounds, or quick limit, and then he's called up to 11 pounds or so on what has actually been a tough final day. Oh, I got like a snail or something. So there's shells down there. That's there's cool. the hard bottom that you're looking for. Adam Nye on the right side of your screen. Seen him a little bit today, not too much. But Nye sitting in seventh place, only has four for about five pounds. I think it gets deeper in this indention up ahead. This was good grass when, uh, when it was a little warmer and, and the swim jig was happening. This was, this grass in three feet was really good. Two feet here, it's really shallow. Picking up a bunch of junk. See a bird up ahead, like trying to pick up some shad. That's always a good sign. Oh, that's a stump. Should get deeper like any minute.
Carson's been covering some water with that crankbait. Said about five to five to eight feet of water, five to nine feet of water off the edge of that grass is ideal. He said this is about three feet, and that's what the swim jig bite was good for when it was warm in practice. Everything's sticky. But that little bit deeper has been the key for his crankbait. That access to deep water for some of these fish has helped him be able to load up, catch a couple fish in the similar area. So speeding ahead to where he saw that bird feeding on some shad, and hopefully that means more fish coming for Carson. Starting to drop off now. There we go. Three feet. Oh man, they just not biting. There we go. Five feet. Ray said right there, there it is, five feet. It's the ideal depth off the edge of the grass that he's wanting. See that shad? Shad popping up by the grass. That's really good. I like to see him popping by the grass and not out, out in the middle. And we got the bird up here. We got some stuff going on here. It's looking good. Ten feet here. Come on. Let's see what time we got. Twelve forty seven. One more. Chris Payne on the right side of your screen now.
Come on, fish. Sam Fish just updated himself and he has a limit, ninth place, but five for eight. So everyone in our field has a limit, except for about four or five guys. Over half the field has a limit right now. So we get down to about an hour and 10 minutes left. No one's really made a move. They've made moves from fourth to 10th, but no one has made a move in the top five to cut into Keith Carson's de uh, lead right now and everyone else's deficit. Six, seven behind for Clint Miller, seven, five for Teb Jones, eight, eight for Jacob Walker, 10, four for Alex Sherrill, and that's the five top five anglers. Alex Sherrill with only three for eight pounds though. Good quality, just not many. Come on, it's been dead for a few minutes now. They're gonna all be grouped up somewhere. They can't resist this Fritz side when I run it by them. So I think it just means there's like no fish right here. Today's the final day of the Open, but in the fishing industry, overall, December 5th has been dubbed International Aaron Martin's Day, and that is to show some support for Aaron Martin's former Elite Series pro and champion. Going through some tough times, we're not far from his home here at Lay Lake. He's not far from this region of Alabama. And Aaron's been fighting all of 2020 against uh, cancer and whatnot. He has recovered and overcome, and. During this time, though, we still want to continue to support him. He's going through treatments, tests, and whatnot. So if you're watching on Bassmaster Live and you're a fan of Aaron Martins, feel free to send him a message, post a photo, your favorite photo of him, and share the word that today we're supporting Aaron Martins. And all days, we're supporting everyone in the industry because this is a very important and special industry. But today, Aaron Martins, your thoughts and prayers are with you and your family.
big as I thought it was. Need a good one. Here, buddy. Chris Payne hooked up. Dude, I've been seeing little spot parts all over here with that bullet on shaft. He bloody me up. Ripped the hook right through my finger. Yeah, two quick fish catches, one by Chris Payne that we're watching right now, and Clint Miller just updated his bass track as well. Another pound, so there we go. I mentioned I made the shout out. I said second through sixth. No one's cut into Keith Carson's deficit, but Chris Payne right there filling his limit, and Clint Miller upgrading by a pound. That's a good one. Good one for Chris Payne right there. He's 10-9 back. It's at least a three pounder or so. I'm gonna put him in the top four, maybe the top three. Chris Payne trying to chip away. Got an hour left of competition for these guys to be able to make some moves if they're gonna catch Keith Carson. And this is the way the unofficial leaderboard's looking right now. Keith Carson, Clint Miller, Teb Jones, Jacob Walker, Alex Sherrill, Chris Payne, his fish has not upgraded, but you see how tight it is. Down there around third through seventh. Payne should jump up there. And hey, when we come back from commercial break, we will have a special guest on Skype, one of our Elite Series qualifiers from the Opens, and be able to talk to him about how he got it done in the 2020 Opens. We'll be right back. Live coverage of the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live will return after this short break. You're watching the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live. Not only is it the final day of the Lay Lake event, we're gonna crown a champion today, but it's also the final day of the Open season, all eight of them, and specifically the Eastern Opens, which means Elite Series berths are getting sorted out. You see all those guys highlighted in yellow? Those are double qualifiers. Patrick Walters, Pat Schlapper, Justin Atkins, and Brian New, all double qualified. That's why there's eight anglers listed there that'll be in the Elites next year. It's just such a competitive Eastern Opens. And if you look down in fifth place right there, but second technically in the Eastern Opens, Scott Martin, Justin Hamner, KJ Queen, and Josh Straysner was the one who was the top qualifier of the guys unqualified. And we actually have on the line right now, Scott Martin. He's still hanging around that Lay Lake region. Scott, yesterday, this whole season, it's been an up and down ride, but you've managed to overcome some maybe tougher day ones to get it done and qualify for the Elite Series. You didn't get the classic berth you were hoping for at the beginning of the year, but that's going to be available from the 2021 Elite Series season, isn't it? It is. You know, uh, it, it was such a tough year. I mean, everything from, you know, the events in the fall to different fisheries, uh, all the competition that we had. And we had so many really, really good anglers in the, in the competition this year on all, all the Opens. And uh, I had two goals at the beginning of the year. One is obviously to, most importantly, is to qualify for the Elite Series. And number two is to win the Bassmasters Classic. So I wanted to win one Open this year. I won an Open trophy. So we'll see. Maybe I'll fish a few Opens next year. Uh, but I am looking forward to getting out on the Elite Trail next year. So we have released our schedule actually during day one of Lay Lake. So our schedule next year takes us from Florida to New York, Texas, Alabama, all in between. And it kind of sets up where there should be a couple maybe tough ones, curveballs, but really there should be a bunch of big fish events. Which ones have you looked at? I know you've probably already scoped it out some. Which ones have you looked at that you're excited for uh, just to tackle? I know it's going to be good to be back in a routine of a, a full elite season for you. You know, for me, I mean, obviously, Lake Champlain is dear to my heart. I can't wait to get there in July. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Lake Fork, you know, I look at the month, the time of the year. I, I, I think it's going to be a sight fishing tournament, which is going to be even, you know, just going to be awesome to be able to fish on Lake Fork uh, that time of the year. And, uh, you know, it, Pickwick, you know, it, that lake is so special as well. So I, I have some pretty good experience on a lot of these lakes. But, you know, when you take – you know, you take something like the Sabine River. I don't know anything about the Sabine at all, but um, but I'm looking forward to it. I think you're right. I think it's going to be an awesome schedule. 
I think there's going to be a lot of big fish caught, and I'm super excited about it. It's it's, uh, it's something I've dreamed about, so I'm just glad this season's over with. I can't wait to get home and hang out and celebrate with my family. So for you, you mentioned it. We've talked about the tough days, the consistent days on the Opens. Lay Lake was pretty consistent for you. You had a solid day one, uh, mid-pack, but it wasn't what you necessarily needed. You were technically out of the elite cut at that point. You upgraded by at least a pound on day two and up that total, which is a huge dump. If you can go up in weight on day two of an open, you're not going to just gain three or four spots. You're going to gain 20, 25 spots, and that's what you did safely getting yourself second place in the Eastern Opens. But take me back to Louisville, the last one of the Centrals, day one, probably one of the maybe the toughest days of fishing that you've had. How do you rebound from that to continue to finish that event and then come into this one with some a positive mental attitude? Well, that little that little if you've ever seen the movie Men in Black, you know that little black black mind thing. So I got on uh, I got on eBay right after the event and found one, crazy, and I did mind eraser after that event and so all was good. You know, I don't I don't what Louisville what? I don't even remember that event. I mean, that was I don't even know what you're talking about, <laughs> but, but still, yeah, I mean, that was a tough event, you know, it, believe it or not, as crazy as this may sound, I had a good game plan. It's just the weather and a few little things just didn't work out like I thought, but my game plan was solid. So I look at that event, even though I did terrible, right? I look at that event and still say to myself that that had potential, like it had potential if things would have just went in a little bit different direction on the weather. I think I would have been a little more competitive, obviously. But, you know, it, this this fall fishing this year, what I've learned, what I've learned is that, that in the fall, when these lakes are in transition like they are, you, you have to find an area or even a spot and just really milk it for what it's worth. Running around trying to do a pattern like we always do in the spring and summer, uh, you know, it, it's, it's pretty non-existent, to be honest with you. Fall fishing in those transition times, and we just hit it, unfortunately, on some of those lakes right in the in the heart of that transition, just tough, just really, really tough. So this event here, you know, for me, it was back to normal fishing. Uh, I felt like I could run around the lake and kind of call my shots a little bit, and it was a lot of fun. So I'm glad we finished the year off in a lake, on a lake that has so much diversity to kind of get me excited about the upcoming season. So for you, obviously, you've been a touring pro and a successful one for your for as long as I've been alive, basically, not to age you at all, but you've been a touring pro at a high level for a, a couple decades now. For you to now make that transition in your career, you weren't you weren't shy about it, jumping into the Opens exclusively this year and then to qualify for the Elites and the Classic, try to get that done. You probably watch the Elite Series. You know what the field is full of. A lot of great anglers, 88 pros. It's probably going to be close to 100 next year. And the 12 Opens anglers that are qualified coming in, I, there, there are no lapses in talent for the 100 anglers that are going to be fishing the Elite Series next year. Where do you see yourself fitting in? Because it is going to be new routines, new tournament staff, a different change for you this far into your career. But it's probably got to be exciting because there's a lot of new blood, a lot of new people you've been able to watch for the first time this year and see how they perform to see how you'll maybe align with uh, the crew here. No, totally, totally agree. It is going to be different. You know, we're used to, you know, the FLB tour, we're used to three solid days of practice and then an off day. And um, so, you know, doing doing two and a half days, I guess, of practice uh, is going to be a little different for me. I'm going to have to make a little bit better decisions on my first day of practice. Usually it takes me a couple of days to find fish on the lake. I, I kind of have a weird way of kind of trying to eliminate water before I figure out what I need to do. But I'm going to have to change that. So my practice routine is going to have to be different. And I'm going to have to, you know, really and not having a a, a co-angler is going to be good of course so there's going to be a lot of things there that are, that are going to be awesome but the competition like you said these guys are hungry um there's a lot of super super good talented anglers there, the best in the world in my opinion and uh and but i'm looking forward to it there's so many of my old friends that are on the on the on the bassmaster tour that used to be with me on the flw so it's kind of like the band's getting back together so i'm excited about that too i cannot wait to be able to hang out with some of my buddies that, uh, that I've missed for the last couple of years. Well, I saw you commented on Justin Atkins, also an Elite Series qualifier this year. I saw you commented on his post and said you can't wait to fish with him till 29, 21. I don't know if you're going to last 900 years, but if you do on the Elite <laughs> Series, we better watch out for the next 900 years or so. But, well, Scott Martin, we, we're so happy to 
have you qualified? I know it's a goal of yours, and I know your fan base. It's been fun watching them chime in on the Opens Live this year, following along with your journey. You inviting them to the weigh-ins. I know that it'll be fun next year. Hopefully, we'll have some crowds, and the you know the country will begin to you know get back to normal for Bassmaster tournaments with the crowds and the expos and whatnot. Yeah, I'm super super excited about it. Like I said, uh, uh, you know, I was I was born into bass, and and I can't wait to uh, get over on the Elite Series tour and hopefully win a one of those blue trophies it would be something special for sure and uh you know be able to be able to hold up something for in front of my dad it'll be a pretty special moment well scott i appreciate your time thanks for joining us uh, a couple minutes there with scott martin as he's going to make his way back to florida for the off season the short off season will start back up this is the the first week of december and we'll start back up the second week of february down in florida his home state and we will see how scott martin fares in the elite series as a rookie First year guy, I can't call him a rookie, he's made way too much money to be a rookie. Scott Martin qualifying from the Eastern Opens with Josh Straysner, Justin Hamner, and KJ Queen, Adam Nye hooked up right now. It's a giant. <clears throat> oh, it's not that big. It's number five though. Must have got me down that tree, felt huge. Number five, took all day. At least we got five for weigh-in. <sighs> Not sure what he was doing up there, there's nothing there. I think it's a good one. <laughs> Keith Carson hooked up again. Be the nail in the coffin with 45 minutes left. Maybe in the not. Day. But you might think he'll do green, I think, yeah. He might. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. I got part flip in this one. Looks so good.
Yeah. Yeah, I know. Dang, can't get through. Keith Carson now picking up his flipping stick, punching through some of this grass after just catching some on a crankbait. That was one. That was one for sure. Hit it again. Come on. Little guy. Keith Carson's by far caught the most fish today of anyone we've seen on camera. Teb Jones has been catching a bunch as well, but for sure, Chris Car or Keith Carson, not Chris Carson. He's on my fantasy team. Shoot.
about 30 minutes left in the fishing day, probably about seven to 10 minute run for some of these guys. Those guys who are up river, probably gonna have to start making their way back in the next five minutes or so, depending on what the Lay Lake traffic is on a Saturday. Adam and I being one of those, he's not too far up the river, but enough. Jacob Walker's gotta come back too. We got 123. Less than an hour till we gotta be back. Okay. Carson with another one. This one's probably not gonna help him either. It is still kind of scary with about a five and a half to six pound lead. Clint Miller's caught a six pounder each day. Yes, if he did that, he'd only call about a pounder. So he'd have about a five pound coal, but make it a ball game for sure, but that's the way it's lining out right now. Keith Carson, about a six pound lead, five and a half pound lead over Clint Miller, seven to seven and a half pound lead on Tep Jones. Chris Payne, fourth place, Jacob Walker, fifth. Both eight and change right. back. Out with Clint Miller right now.
Clint Miller and Alex Prince still grinding away with their shaky heads on some hard spots. And if you see that, there's a boat ramp right there in that yard. Comes down into the water. You've got some man-made docks and structure. There's just some hard, cleared out areas that they've had to make to put in things like a boat ramp and whatnot. That's right. and it's a place the fish will group up when the current's right and comes flowing by it. That current's long stopped since it ended about an hour and a half ago. Adam Nye still upriver some. That music dubs another commercial break. We got 30 minutes left in the Bassmaster Open season. Keith Carson's in coast mode right now, trying to take it home. Five and a half pound lead or so over Clint Miller. Teb Jones still plugging away. Been catching some fish. Not sure if they've really been calling for him. Chris Payne, Jacob Walker as well. 30 minutes left. We'll have an interview after the break and some more fish catches leading up to check-in for the final day at Lay Lake. We'll be right back. The Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live is brought to you by Abu Garcia, Berkeley, Nitro Boats, and by Ranger Boats. You're watching the Nationwide Bassmaster Opens Live. We are oh so close to finishing up a lot of loose ends. Not only this tournament with Keith Carson in the lead, but also Angler of the Year points, Elite Series bids. One thing we know is for certain is a couple guys are locked in for sure. Only a few loose ends to tie up there. Brian New won the Falcon Rods Angler of the Year race over Justin Atkins, over Matt Robertson, and over Mark Frazier. That was your top four to qualify from the overall race. And Justin Atkins coming up one, sh one point short of the Angler of the Year win and lead. And we've got Justin Atkins with us right now. Justin, Welcome into the show. Congratulations on qualifying for the Elite Series for the second time in three years. Many don't remember that you qualified in the end of the 2018 season through the Opens points as well. So two times in three years, and I guess you decided to pull the trigger in 2020. Yeah, I did. It's a, uh, I appreciate it, man. That's it's it's been an awesome experience. It's been a a crazy long year. Um, I made a joke. Um, somebody earlier when I was running in yesterday afternoon I knew I had enough in the live well to you know to seal the deal and uh, all I could think about was when Forrest Gump gets done running and he stops and turns around and looks at the crowd of people and says I'm tired now I think I'll go home that's all I could think about I was just like just get this thing on the trailer let's get it done and I'm ready to go home for a little while it's been a it's been a long year it's been a great year and uh, just very blessed so yep. uh, I can't wait for February to get here. You're one of the guys that has double qualified in the points overall and in the Eastern, so you took care of business in both trails. For you this year, fishing a lot of different tournaments, you fished another professional circuit, you fished all eight opens. It was a busy year, ranging from January to December. I know you're ready to be done, but it felt good to get it done in your home state there, Alabama, and a welcome sight that three events are in the state of Alabama next year for the Elite Series schedule. Yeah, absolutely. You know, to the way it just the way the whole year worked out was just, you know, a Cinderella story, you know, being able to come back to Alabama to finish the year up at Lay Lake. Um, I, truthfully, I, I grew up on a river in Mississippi. I didn't even, you know, I didn't even go to the Coosa probably till I was 24, 25 years old was the first time I ever went to the Coosa River. But I've really fallen in love with it. It fishes a lot like I grew up fishing at home and, um, I've just had a lot of success there. I topped 10 to Alabama Bass Trail there one time, you know, obviously with Grant Galloway, my partner. Um, and then we turned around and um, 
I won at Logan Martin, finished, um, what was it, 19th at Neely and 16th here. I, I don't know. The coast has just always been really good to me, and it's close to home. Um, I normally go stay with Scott Canterbury when I go down there, so I have a free place to stay. And uh, it's just been when when it popped up that Lay Lake was going to be the last one, I was like, all right, we're going we're going to get this done. This is this is this is I couldn't have wrote the story out no better. So to turn around and make the elites, and then next year be able to fish at Pickwick and Gunnersville, and then Neely Henry again on the coast, I'm I'm pretty excited. Yeah, if people don't know it, Pickwick might be the one that you circled Justin Atkins' name. I know I can't put any more pressure on you than you would put on yourself, so I'm not afraid to put that. I already picked it. I don't care what Zona, Mercer, Davey, Tommy, Such, I don't care what anybody says. I already claimed dibs June 10th through the 13th that Justin Atkins is my pick for Pickwick. But other than those three Alabama stops, have you looked at the schedule and are you excited about any of the other ones and, and ones that you maybe are confident in, even though people wouldn't expect you to be? Yeah, I mean, truthfully, I've never been to Fort Loudon. Um, I, I don't have a clue what it looks like. I'm going to just assume it looks like a lot of the Tennessee River. But what I've learned is those lakes are different in their own ways. You know, they're all on the Tennessee River, but they're all different. And different ones fish the same as others and whatnot. And so I'm looking forward to going to that one just because I have a little bit of history, you know, learning about the new Tennessee River lakes because I've been to each one of them except for that one. And so... Looking forward to that. It's at a good time of year. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm excited about fishing the June tournament on Pickwick. Don't get me wrong, but at this day and age, guys, you know, a lot of people know how to fish offshore and guys know the deal. But when you come to Tennessee River in February to April, there's always a lot of different things going on. There's a lot of different ways you can win. And so I'm excited for that one just because it's a new lake. I'll get to go learn it on the fly. And there's always – going to be there's going to be a lot of options to possibly win that tournament I feel like and so I, I'm excited about that one um, I've never been been to the Sabine River I know it's a monster it's a huge place it's really vast and I've never seen the St. John's River but I, I enjoy fishing in Florida over in the year so I'll probably try to take a ride down look at both of those places before before the year starts and get an idea of what we're getting into there and then wrapping the year up on a small mouth large mouth factory and a uh and a smallmouth factory will be fun. You know, smallmouth love to bite, and I love reeling them in. So it's it's going to be a good year. I'm looking forward to it. Well, it seems like you've – I've known you – almost my whole life I feel like because college fishing seems so long ago but going from college uh, cutting your teeth around home in the Alabama tournament is so tough jumping into the FLW tour when you did it wasn't a couple that was just a couple years ago 2016 2017 that time frame you've had a lot of success you won the Forest Wood Cup you're not going to be a rookie next year just because you have too much money in your bank account to be a rookie <laughs> but uh, and, and then we've had professional fishing change how it has what does it mean to you to now be one of those college anglers that has now competed and fished you know on the elite series it's gr it's a growing number and it's definitely one of the reasons why you're probably here is the stuff you learned in college traveling around just as a young angler getting that confidence nationally yeah absolutely so you know i have a unique perspective about it just because i actually fished um what was called the everstart series back then that was flw's version of the opens kind of the triple a level i went that route before i came back and fished college so i had a perspective of while i was fishing everstarts um and whatnot jordan lee was one of my best friends and he was in college at the time and i saw how much exposure and whatnot he was getting out of that and I realized right there, that's a great opportunity. It's not near as expensive. I can go back to school and be with buddies and meet guys. And what it, what really evolved from that is the contacts I've made. Um, I know guys all across the nation. I got a place to stay. I got somebody to help me change a tire if I need it. You know, whatever. I know guys everywhere. And all those contacts were made in college. And then on top of that, the most critical thing that I met was people in the industry that have helped me with getting contacts for sponsors or these people now work, um, you know, work at these companies. I mean, my title sponsor has been Berkeley and Abu for the last couple of years. And my boss there is Brad Rutherford, which is a guy that I met at the very first college tournament I ever fished. Um, we met in a pocket on the Harris chain and uh, sat there and talked for a while and became buddies. And a few years later, you know, he employs me. And so it's a, uh, I think that people miss 
the big picture sometimes with college fishing. It's not the yeah, you know, it's not about winning the tournaments and all that. Like all that stuff's the that's the icing on the cake. The cake part is the contacts you're gonna make, the lifelong friends you're gonna make, um, just just the whole nine yards. So get anybody that's in college just listening to me right now, please soak up those moments. When you know, when you're out there rigging rods and some guy's in the park lot next to you, meet him, introduce yourself, become buddies with him, you know, whatever, because you just never know down the road. We're all in this industry together and we're all trying to you know, make a living in it. Whether you fish or you work in the industry, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. We're all we all share a passion for it, and so you need to make as many contacts as you can. So that was a huge part of my life was going back to college fishing, and you know, thank you to Bass for you know putting that on because that was uh, that was critical. You know, me being where I'm at now. Well, I told I ran out of gas in January in the middle of nowhere, Louisiana, and I wasn't worried because I probably knew someone nearby and there was somebody 15 minutes away in the middle of nowhere <laughs> that could bring me some gas. So I understand that college fishing thing. And he even, you said it wasn't about the wins. Totally, uh, when you lose them, you can still be in fishing like I am because I did not win those events at all. <laughs> but for you, people might not know Justin Atkins uh, through the Bassmaster Trail like they should. What will the Elite Series gain with a Justin Atkins next year? What are your aspirations for and your goals for, for next year to jump in and compete? You know, um, gosh, what a, what a way to put me on the spot. I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I just, I'm going to go out there and just give it 100%. Um, you know, I, I just cannot wait to get back to that format and practicing that way. And it's just what I feel comfortable with. Um, you know, it's, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm thrilled. I cannot wait to get back and be a part of it. Um, the biggest thing, you know, for me is, uh, since I was a kid, I've always wanted to fish a classic, you know, and that, that burning desire hasn't gone away in the last four years. Like I, I can't find anything that's, that's scratching that itch. And so I just decided it's time we better scratch it. And, uh, I, I'm I, I'm going to put 110 percent into it in 21 to make sure that in 22 I will be fishing a Bassmasters Classic. Well, I don't know of anyone who made more top 20s in the Opens this year than Justin Atkins. Didn't make a top 12, but made so many events from 13th to 20th this year. Justin Atkins going to be a newcomer on the Elite Series in 2021. Justin, I appreciate you joining us. Thank you for your time, and man, our 12 qualifiers that will come from the Opens, plus Pat Schlapper from the Nation Champion. It's going to be a tough 13 new anglers for the Elite Series field and a tough person for the Classic field probably as well. Keith Carson closing in just 10 minutes before check-in. We see Chris Payne not far from Beeswax right now with that just over his shoulder. It looks like Keith Carson narrowing in on a victory today to be able to make the Bassmaster Classic. Justin Atkins, appreciate him joining us as well. It is incredible to see the level of competition. We've talked about it. We've got guys, and I'm gonna go through the 12 guys that have qualified uh, basically today and this week for the Elite Series. From the Central Division, it goes down as Jason Christie, Greg Hackney, Kenta Kamura, and Daryl Gleason right now. Overall, Brian New, Justin Atkins, Matt Robertson, and Mark Frazier. And in the Easterns, Josh Strasner, Scott Martin, Justin Hamner, and KJ Queen. If you don't know Justin Hamner, he is a great angler in the state of Alabama, a young angler as well. He's been a boat captain, I believe, for his younger brother, um, if that's right, in high school. So he has been involved in Bassmaster tournaments for a while. He travels with Patrick Walters on the Opens. Justin Hamner's gonna be a great addition as well. And then for KJ Queen, he's the one of the guys fishing today. It doesn't look like he's going to jump up and win this event, so Daryl Gleason looks like he will make the Bassmaster Elite Series. But for KJ Queen, if you don't know his name, he is one of the college anglers that just graduated, jumped into the Opens, and wanted to try to make it a deal. Fished all eight of them. And I'm going to go through some of KJ's accolades already as just a young, young angler. He was the North Carolina Junior Bass Champion. He won the high school national championship in the TBF Federation. He is the only angler to qualify for five college championships in both Bassmaster and FLW college competition. He and his partner Dax Ewart were last year's Bassmaster College Team of the Year. KJ Queen, if you don't know that name, 
He is one to watch as well, one of the young anglers from actually not far from where I grew up. He's a Lake Norman angler, and I'm not, that's where I wasn't born and raised, but I spent a lot of my time from five to 20 years old was in the Lake Norman region. And that just adds to another one of the Carolinians in the Elite Series, but KJ Queen fishing today, trying to make the classic, but Keith Carson's lead is gonna to be too much for a lot of these guys to be able to overcome. KJ will be one to watch. That's very interesting. Of those 12 guys that we mentioned qualifying from the nation or from the opens, with Pat Schlapper coming from the nation, we've got at least two, possibly three collegiate anglers coming in as well. So more going to that stat as that number grows for the Elite Series. Keith Carson probably making his last stop of the day. 25 minutes to check in. For all the fans watching at Beeswax Landing right there, on the banks of Lay Lake, we appreciate that facility, such a legendary name. If you say beeswax when you're talking about the fishing industry, everyone knows that's Lay Lake. So everyone watching there at the, at the takeoff, I appreciate you guys tuning in to Bassmaster Live today. It's been a great season. I'm so happy we decided to cover the opens through Bassmaster Live this year. We've, we've seen some incredible moments starting out the Arkansas River. We didn't do the first open of the year when Brian knew one, but when June came around and we jumped into the Opens coverage again after COVID, we were able to start doing those tournaments again. We got to watch John Garrett make a, a fatal mistake and Chris Jones come from behind to win that because of John Garrett's two pound penalty for a culling infraction. We got to see Sam Rayburn, incredible big fish factory there with a Japanese angler winning, Masayuki Matsushita. We've got to see Cody Bird make 100 spot changes in a day at Neely Henry win. We've seen Keith Carson just be so dominant with a crankbait while everyone else is flipping or throwing finesse stuff. And then in the Easterns, we got to see Patrick Walters use his electronics at Hartwell get the win. We got to see Matt Robertson make a game plan switch midday with Topwater and win at Cherokee. And now we're uh, going to see the season wrap up today. I believe I covered all of those guys right there. No, and then Louisville, Tommy Williams, our latest Central Open, the last one of the year, Tommy Williams, flipping in a shallow area. Greg Hackney, Keith Combs also in there, but Tommy outlasted them all to win and make the Classic. Seven Opens live days this year, and we're excited to probably, I don't know for sure, but I'd assume with the success of the Opens live and the popularity of the Opens overall that we may see some more live coverage for the Opens next year. Chris Payne grinding out his last couple minutes of fishing. So many local anglers, so many great anglers at Lay Lake fishing this week. Clint Miller, Chris Payne, Jacob Walker, Sam Fish, Alex Sherrill, Joey Nania, Keith Poche. A lot of these local guys fared very well. It's the most anglers we've seen from a specific lake make the final day. Hartwell would probably be the one that's the closest second. And then also Cherokee was a good one for a lot of local East Tennessee anglers.
I believe first check has to be close to 2 o'clock. Yep, 2.15 Central Time, 2.15 Local Time, 3.15 Eastern Time. Clint Miller's checking his time on his graph right there. 15 minutes left of fishing, and we've got a couple minutes left of Bassmaster Live. Keith Carson, Clint Miller, Chris Payne. Our top three anglers that we have on camera. Teb Jones wedged in between there. After having a good day jumping up from sixth, gonna improve his money total. Like I mentioned earlier, $38,000 for the Ranger Top Cash Award for the best boater this week, the winner of this event. Plus a classic berth if your name is Keith Carson. Clint Miller and Chris Payne would not. Teb Jones would though. So two of our top four could make the Bassmaster Classic with a win. $38,000 Ranger Top Cash, I mentioned that. Classic Berth, which is everyone gets paid $10,000 at that event at least. As we roll out, we're going to crown a champion in just a couple minutes on Bassmaster.com for the weigh-in. For everyone at Beeswax, you're going to watch it go down live. Someone's going to take home this tournament. Keith Carson's had a great event. Clint Miller's caught some big fish this week as well, repping for the Home Lake squad. Oh, get in there! Woo! Meanwhile, Elite Series berths will be solidified. Daryl Gleason's watching Bassmaster oh, Live and one. the weigh-in, eagerly waiting to see if KJ Queen somehow has more than what his okay. bass track says. Okay, Either nice way, we'll have 12 oh, qualifiers oh, for the Elite like Series. One Stay more from up. the nation. We're going to wrap it up. Thank you to everyone Stay who makes up. this happen. Everyone in the truck, <laughs> everyone online, three. everyone in the yes. Bassmaster family. Thank you. We'll see you next oh, year. Three. Two, anyway.